the Lynchburg Hornets have some work to do if they want to add a year to that ODAC champion sign in left center field. We are broadcasting live from Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. It's baseball time again. The Lynchburg Hornets hosting the Bridgewater Eagles and it's an uphill battle for Lynchburg. They are down one game to nothing in the best two out of three series. So that means Lynchburg needs to win both today to advance to the final four of the ODAC tournament in Richmond. Later on this week, Kyle Haney hanging out with you along with my tag team partner, Evan Gates, coming off the top rope here. Evan, a Sunday of baseball that we hope we get to see two games, but you never know here is Bridgewater holding the one nil advantage so far. Well, that's why it's best two out of three. You have to come out and win two ball games to advance, and this is going to be a very exciting day of baseball. Bridgewater, a team with just nine conference wins. Yesterday would have qualified for the 10th if it were the regular season, but they're going to have to go up against Brandon Pond today, and we know that he is a starter, very capable of going far in a ball game. 2021 ODAC Pitcher of the Year, so he's going to have his stuff ready. Yeah, we got a good look at Brandon Pond there in the dugout with Coach Lucas Jones and assistant Michael Solbach, the catcher Holden Fiedler was in that shot as well. So they are ready. And yes, Pond is the kind of guy who can be a shut down arm. He is, I guess still we could say coming off that injury that caused him to miss most of last year. He was three and oh last season before the injury put him on the shelf. He has come back this year, pitched pretty good, not the 2021 numbers uh, that got him that ODAC pitcher of the year award. But kind of like we said with Reed Long yesterday for Bridgewater, who was actually the 2022 pitcher of the year in the conference, those great arms, man, they can find a way to summon up the old stuff. You never know when they're going to have the A-plus game. If you're a Hornet fan, you're hoping Brandon Pond has that A-plus stuff today against Bridgewater. Well, you're exactly right. And experience at this time of the year is so important. Guys who have been in this situation before, we know that Brandon Pond – isn't going to likely have any worries in his head, even being down one to nothing in the series. I think Lynchburg is a team that is capable of coming out quickly, but they're going to have to have energy. We saw five runs in the first three innings yesterday, so a good start, but can they keep that momentum throughout the ballgame? A 7-6 win for Bridgewater yesterday. Jack Batchmore takes his first loss of the season for Lynchburg, and you really have to give a lot of the credit to Bridgewater, their wonderful coaching staff and their players really got it done when they needed to. Uh, it wasn't maybe necessarily a performance you're going to put in the time capsule for Bridgewater, but it was good enough, and it was good enough to give Lynchburg their first loss at home, Evan. I mean, that's what a lot of teams have been unable to do this season, and Bridgewater did that yesterday. Their confidence has got to be through the roof. Absolutely, and Foxfield is such a difficult place to play. Obviously, you have fans for the Hornets, but just in terms of location, not a lot of balls will be hit out from here. And so Bridgewater just coming out, getting the energy started. Obviously, if you win, win game one, something is working. And so we know that the Eagles are going to try and keep that going. And I think for the Hornets, it's not only about getting out early, but it's going to be making sure that confidence is staying in that dugout because this is a team that is still nationally ranked. They're still the one seed in the ODAC tournament, so they just have to rely on what they've done best. Exactly right. Looks like our coaches meeting with the umpires at home plate is done. That means we've got the first pitch coming up. Final thought before we take a little breather, Evan. Expect another close game. One run game yesterday. There was a one run game when these two teams met in early March, and it looks like now 10 of the last 15 have been decided by four runs or less. So kind of meet that close game criteria there as you get a great shot at the fans that have made their way down. They're looking for an exciting close game or two. Again, if you're Lynchburg, you got to win two to advance. Bridgewater needs just one victory. So Evan and myself will be back in just a moment after the national anthem to get the game started here between Bridgewater and Lynchburg. It's coming up next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. 
Now go out there and take it. Every great college has a great city. For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person, competing at a Division III level. It created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career move.
Just about time to get started here at Fox Field in Lynchburg. Kyle and Evan hanging out with you. Bridgewater and Lynchburg, ODAC Tournament Baseball. It's a best two out of three. Bridgewater leading by one game. They got the 7-6 victory yesterday. Evan, give us that starting lineup for the Eagles in game two of the three-game series. The Eagles will lead off with J.R.B. Secker and left. Brett Tharp will be at first base. Brandon Hartman DHing. Hunter Clever in right field. Lucas Bauer in center. Isaac Sumter will have shortstop duties today. Jeffrey Snyder at third. Nick Stavros at second. Jonathan Sexton as catcher. And uh, a one note, fans, Lynchburg is going to be the visiting team in this first game here. So Bridgewater's wearing the home grays, but they're, or the road grays, but they're the home team. You're getting a look at Lynchburg in their Sunday Reds. And there's the leadoff man, Brandon Garcia, playing shortstop, 22 game hitting streak. He'll be followed up by his high school teammate, the fellow Caped Crusader, Ben Jones, will play second and bat second. The All American Avery Neves. Hitting third, Eric Hyatt will play first base and hit in the cleanup spot. Riley O'Donovan is the designated hitter batting fifth. Gavin Collins plays third and hits sixth. It's Jackson Harding again in the seven hole in right field. Holden Fiedler will do the catching and bat eighth. Carson Atkins playing center field and hitting ninth. Lineup very similar. The changes for Lynchburg, Evan, include Ben Jones moving up to that two spot. Eric Hyatt slides up and uh, a lot of it is pretty similar there as we get the first pitch in for strike one. Josh Jorman was hitting second and playing first base yesterday, so that's another slight change for Lynchburg, but very similar. And for Bridgewater, actually, their lineup is exactly the same. Brandon Garcia with a similar result. He popped out in foul ground yesterday to begin the game. And it's a carbon copy almost. Third baseman had to sprint back a little deeper to make that catch, but an interesting statistical oddity there as Brandon Garcia did the same thing to begin yesterday's game. Well, one thing you might want to have a car carbon copy of as well is getting runs on the board here in the first. I think for the Hornets, it's going to be so important to come out with urgency because, yes, it's game two and you're down one, but obviously coming out of a win streak, maybe you have a game that wakes you up a little bit. So for the Hornets now, knowing they are beatable at Fox Field, this is the first time they've had to come back after losing at home. I'd like to see them with a little bit of energy early on. 0-2 count on Ben Jones. The starting pitcher for Bridgewater is Nick Harris. He has really emerged as the number two man in the rotation for Bridgewater this year. He's just a freshman, but pitching pretty good here, especially in the second half of the season. This is start number nine. He carries a three and four record with a 4.60 earned run average. Ben Jones gets just enough of that to stay alive. Yeah, Lynchburg now not undefeated at home. We've been saying that all, all season. They are 20 and one at Fox Field now. A four game overall winning streak was snapped. Look out, Ben Jones takes a breaking ball for strike three. So there's two outs in the books early for Nick Harris and the Bridgewater Eagles. Uh, Bridgewater, meanwhile, they've actually won four out of five, Evan. They are six and nine since April 2nd. So they seem to be playing better baseball, and that's what college baseball late in the season and tournament play is all about. Who gets hot at the right time? Who can keep the confidence going throughout the ups and downs of a season? And you need some individual performers to step up when the time is right as well. That's why it's called tournament time, because throw the stats out the window, throw the records out the window. It's a completely new ball game, and obviously new life for a team like Bridgewater where you come into a best two out of three. And no matter who you're playing, you have, you're two games away from advancing. Fastball at the eye line to Avery Neves. It's a one-two count for the All-American who did homer in his first at bat yesterday. A long bomb to left field. Swung and got a little piece of that, but right into Jonathan Sexton's mitt, and it's two strikeouts to end the first inning. A dream start for Nick Harris in the top of the first. The Bridgewater Eagles will come to bat in just a moment on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. We return to Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. The Hornets playing at home, but the visiting team here in game one today. I think I'm going to alternate, Evan, between calling it game one and game two because it's game two of a potential three-game series, but it's game one of the day. And if Bridgewater wins, it's the only game today as well. Well, I think that's what the Eagles would like to see, and especially with the way they played yesterday. Definitely a chance to make that happen, but like we mentioned, going up against a very strong opposing pitcher, Brandon Pond, who later in the season, coming back from injury, has been very solid. And I think if you're Lynchburg, obviously you want him to go pretty far, try to get some innings. He has seven starts and eight appearances, two and one record on the season, and he's still pitched 25 innings, even with those restrictions early on. Yeah, Brandon Pond, I said the numbers you know, weren't as good as his 2021 ODAC Pitcher of the Year campaign, but it was going to be hard to live up to that anyway. Struck out 90 in that season, led the ODAC in wins, Ks, starts, and innings pitched. His numbers this year aren't bad. I mean, the earned run average, Evan, is still under two. Batters are hitting just over 200 against Brandon Pond. He's got an early 0-2 count on B. Secker. The leadoff man will get a little bit of contact. Had to hurdle the ball as he was running down the first baseline, and it is just a foul ball. But we both love watching Brandon Pond pitch. He's a guy who brings the energy, seems to, seems to feed off the other team's energy sometimes. You know, college baseball teams, it's not like the pro ball where they just kind of sit in the dugout and don't say anything. College teams are always making noise, and Pond, I think, will feed off the noise from his club and the, op the opposition as well. That's part of the way he operates and how he gets his energy and brings what he does have to the table, which is some really good stuff. Swing and a miss. Fiedler's got to scramble for it. Nice job to catch and throw a strike down there to first base. That was good by Holden Fiedler. It wasn't a textbook block. He did not see it immediately. Scrambled back to the ball, and there wasn't a lot of load up and throw. He just kind of picked it up off the ground and snapped it down to first base for the out. Well, I would argue that Jared Biesecker, if he didn't look back at the ball, maybe had a chance to beat it out at first, and that's just unfortunate situation there where you're not sure if it was fouled off or not. You just got to run down the line. But either way, it's Pond's first strikeout. Brett Tharp, the first baseman and man who came out of the bullpen to close it down for Bridgewater yesterday, will hit. Throw on the run from Gavin Collins. Super smooth to get it across for the second out of the inning. And now we've got two down for Brandon Hartman. Came into the weekend hitting 423. Actually held hitless yesterday. So good job by Lynchburg to execute the game plan and keep Brandon Hartman somewhat limited damage wise. He did take one walk. But anytime Brandon Hartman goes hitless in a day, you can consider it a small victory for the defense. Hartman, one of those guys, he's so valuable for a lineup, especially in that three spot just because you know he's always trying to cause damage OBP over 500 and you have to like that if your coach spots being able to get on base in many different ways and that's what the best players do power slider from Brandon Pond that'll be a similarity between he and Zach Potts from yesterday both throw a very sharp slider one two count see if he goes back to it he did Hartman able to lay off when Pond was 
was on a couple years ago and last year before he got hurt. That slider could be in the upper 80s, nearly unhittable. It's still very, very good right now. 2-2 two -two count. Got another one there. Punch out for Pond. Two strikeouts in the inning for both starting pitchers. Maybe we're in for a pitcher's duel here in game two of a potential three. We are finished with the first, still knotted at zero between Bridgewater and Lynchburg. A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg, is that something? It becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. Lynchburg will send Eric Hyatt to bat here in the top of the second inning. Both teams, three up, three down to begin the ball game, Evan. We love offense. We love offense. I don't know that – I don't think we need to remind the fans that, but a good pitcher's duel really does something for the soul, doesn't it? Oh, and then the ODAC tournament too, just to see these guys after a long season really getting their stuff sharp to come out on the mound and deliver I think is always an exciting performance. Well, I know Pond's been getting better and better as the year goes on. I think Nick Harris falls into that category for Bridgewater as well. As Eric Hyatt swings on one and fouls it down to head coach Lucas Jones. Still got the good hands over there in the coach's box, but it's an 0-2 count. Uh, yeah, an interesting – couple interesting statistical notes from yesterday that uh, I think are worth mentioning. Eric Hyatt waves on that one, and it will be a strikeout. Third in a row for Nick Harris. But uh, obviously the home winning streak snapped for Lynchburg. First time they've lost at home since April 23rd of last year. April 23rd, 4-23-22 was the last loss at home for Lynchburg. And it was the first game they've lost this season when scoring five or more runs. All their other losses, the five losses prior to that, they had, had been limited to four or less. So that's an interesting one as well. And we know Lynchburg's team pitching has been so great that obviously offensively, they don't need to score a whole lot of runs to get the victory. So that was a, another interesting note about yesterday in the 7-6 Bridgewater win. And you know what, Kyle? I think that's a testament to how well these Eagles played because to still allow the Hornets to score six and get a victory that shows that you're batting, but obviously having pitchers that went long, we know that Reed Long, who started the game, solid work, and then Bo Rogers, who got the win, it was just all around good performance for Tharp to come in and finish things off. Yeah, it sounded like from the Bridgewater coaching staff that Rogers and Tharp are available if necessary. And associate head coach Travis Beasley did tell us that everyone for Lynchburg is available with the exception of Zach Potts. So that means Jack Batchmore, along with everybody else. O'Donovan turns on one. Into the corner, it stays fair. One hop off the wall. O'Donovan will take the turn around first. Throw coming in, but he beats it with the feet first slide. And Lynchburg has their first hit of the day. And it's a double. In scoring position goes the designated hitter, Riley O'Donovan. That'll be double number 10 of the season for the Rock, Riley O'Donovan, pounding one in the left field corner. Talk about an emphatic way to get things started. He had just one at bat yesterday, coming out the first time he sees it today and getting extra bases. And now Gavin Collins behind him, a man who has the most at-bats on this team, chance to get the run scoring started. Gavin Collins actually led off the ninth inning yesterday with a double. Lynchburg was down by one. Collins doubled in the left center gap, just absolutely nuked a ball on a line 
but ends up getting some bad luck with a ball hitting him. Jackson Harding, I believe, swung at the first pitch and is at bat and hit a ball right at the shortstop and Gavin Collins. Collins tried to jump over it. The ball took a high hop, ended up hitting Gavin Collins, so he is gone on the runner's interference. And it was a really bad moment to have something that's a rare play in baseball happen. And you got to say it really hurt the Hornets yesterday, Evan, when that ball did hit Gavin Collins. But maybe a chance to erase some of that right here. He'll swing on that in the left center gap. High. Collins knows he didn't get a lot of it. Left fielder B. Secker coming on, makes the running grab for out number two. B. Secker had a long run to get that one. And to your point about yesterday, I think that play mentally for the Hornets was very difficult to overcome because you don't see it very often. You get a double to start the inning, so you're thinking you're in a good spot. But that's baseball. You have to have short-term memory, like we said, and being able to move past what you maybe had troubles with, struggles with. So obviously it's game two. That's what the Hornets have to do today. And it's easy to sort of rewind the play and, and revisit it, especially when you got the benefit of, of replay and those things, as Harding will swing on this one. Could be another tough play for B. Secker. Nope, he's got the tent out, camped under it, and that will be the final out of the inning. So Riley O'Donovan hits a double, but gets stranded at second base, and we're still tied nothing, nothing after one and a half at Fox Field. Are really unique. Their their background and their passion for teaching is really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Winsburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when it does. has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. It's a great day to play at Fox Field, perfect weather in the Hill City. I think we're gonna get to the upper 70s today. There is a chance of some rain later on, Evan. I think we'll see clouds build as the day goes on, and that's why, one of the reasons why, they moved this start time up to 11 a.m. for this one. We were originally set to go at noon, but just a smart decision there as you get early contact from Hunter Clever. Garcia will make the play for out number one. Both teams are swinging early in the count. We've only had one base runner yet, so no need for us to dip into the story time file just yet as the action is happening fast and furious. Oh, I think these teams are telling us to wait a little bit and <laughs> not a lot of loud contact either. O'Donovan had the double, but other than that, we've seen lots of strikeouts. I think how that's how both these pitchers like to operate. And when you're moving quickly, getting the offense back out there, it's always a good thing for a ball club who wants to try and score runs and gain momentum. I love the way Brandon Pond thinks about the game. I got a chance to sit behind him when the Hornets were down in Danville taking on Avert in a road doubleheader about a month ago. Brandon Pond was running the charts and running the radar gun behind home plate and just, uh, just kind of hearing some of the things that he talks about during the game. And, and I think, Evan, you feel like in a long doubleheader, uh, minds are going to wander. We're talking about 18, 19, 20-year-olds after all. You think some of the conversation might be about non-baseball things, but really, Brandon Pond and the guys he was talking to in that doubleheader against Avert, it was like 99% baseball talk, which, which really impressed me. And again, speaks to how he thinks about the game and uh, how much 
mental and physical energy he puts into the game as you get sort of a soft line drive from Lucas Bauer over to the first baseman Eric Hyatt makes the catch in the air for out number two. And that's what's so special about this Hornets team as Isaac Sumter steps up to the plate. I think everyone on this on this ball club understands just where this team is at. And yes, you can think about rankings, you can think about the statistics, but just looking back at the last few years, continued success in the ODAC, that's why it's so fun to watch what Lynchburg can do because everyone understands what they're capable of and loves doing it. You got guys that are playing the game the right way too. They're putting in the work, they're getting the positive inputs. All those wins don't happen by accident. 1-1 one, one count as Pond just missed the zone there. He's gotten to work from the wind up the whole time. That might have been a change up that just kind of ran inside, but did catch enough of the plate for a called strike. 1-2 now. Let's see if Pond's going slider here. Ready with two strikes. Here's the pitch. It was a breaking ball. Pond off the mound to field it. Nice grab, and there is the third out of the inning. So another three up, three down inning for the Eagles. We are still tied after two complete at Fox Field in Lynchburg. has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Sunday Reds for the Lynchburg Hornets. Always exciting when Hornets teams put on the red unis. And hopefully it brings Lynchburg some good vibes and good, good luck today, Evan. Not that they need luck, but never hurts to have a little bit, right? Oh, and in a tournament, you might need a few plays here and there. But Nick Harris so far, three strikeouts through two innings and against a Lynchburg team that can make contact, that's a very good start. You really got to like what Nick Harris has on offer right now if you're a Bridgewater fan. Just a freshman, but boy, he is impressing me. I got to go back in the file here for the, uh, the the previous two games and see how much Nick Harris pitched, uh, excuse me, pitched the first time these two ball clubs met in early March, but he has been impressive so far. Got a swing and a miss from Holden Fiedler. 2-1 count on the catcher for Lynchburg. Fiedler will put a charge into that one, but it's foul. This is a part of the lineup with lots of power as well because Fiedler here in this eighth spot, but then you turn things over to Atkins, leads the team in doubles with 11, and then you go up to Brandon Garcia, who obviously knows how to get on base. Fiedler got under that one into center field, and Lucas Bauer will make the grab. Had to put the glove up to shield his eyes from the sun a little bit. It is a sunny day, and I mentioned I think the clouds will build a bit as the day goes on. But right now the sun a little bit of a factor. Wind not really a factor, although flag is blowing, Evan. It looks like it's blowing out to right center, which is probably the, the prevailing wind direction here. Carson Atkins will put down a base hit bunt attempt. This is nice. Harris off the field. Throw is wide. Atkins will stay at first base as the ball caroms off the fence line. Assistant coach Gabe Garcia had to get acrobatic and jump over that wild throw, but he is pumped. Nice fist bump there for Atkins at first base. And it's a bunt single for the guy with a lot of power, like you mentioned, but he's got that in his game as well. He can play the short game too. It's like a great golfer. He can drive it 300 yards and then he can chip and putt too. Carson Atkins. Well, that was an excellent way to get on base too because he didn't show bunt for long. He almost waited and made that decision with the pitch, but 
those are plays that can start building the momentum. We've seen it in a few games this season where the Hornets lay one down for a bunt single and starting to inning off right. Obviously, there was one out, but like we said, this is the top of the lineup. Chance to start something here. Yeah, just another arrow in the quiver there for Carson Atkins. He is aboard with one out. Brandon Garcia working with an 0-1 count. He popped out to the third baseman in foul ground in his first at bat. Couple tosses over from Nick Harris, aware of Carson Atkins' speed. Even if you didn't have the scouting report coming in, you know the guy just put down a base hit bunt, so clearly he can run. March 11th, these teams played a doubleheader here at Fox Field. Lynchburg won the first one 9-3, got a walk-off win in game two, 6-5. It was a 7-6 Bridgewater win yesterday. So that's the last two games these two ball clubs have met, Evan, have been one-run ball games. That's always something that not only tells a story about how competitive they are, but we know both these rosters have lots of talent and that's what's going to happen in tournament time. Atkins stealing, and throw was in the dirt, but he's going to be safe. It was a very close play at second. Yeah, bang, bang at second. Good catch and release from Jonathan Sexton. The throw was a bit towards the first base line, and it looks like Coach Spots for Bridgewater wants to have a word with the field umpire that made the call, give it a stolen base for Carson Atkins. It was as close as you can get. And we will get a second look at it there. You be the judge, fans. You make the call on that one. Uh, and I'm just I'm going back to a previous thought here, Evan. While this discussion happens, the umpires are going to get together. It looks like Nick Harris did not pitch in either game earlier in the season when these two ball clubs met. So another one back to the scouting report. Maybe small advantage for Nick Harris and Bridgewater because Lynchburg doesn't have as much data to go on. Yeah, you can go back and see what he's done in previous games against other teams, but you haven't given him the eye test. Oh, my goodness, they changed the call. The umpires got together and changed the call, and now Lucas Jones, he'll have his say with the umpires. And I will just, I will just point out, fans, that that is quite rare to get a stolen base safer out call overturned at second because – uh, and this is not my opinion, but let's just be honest. Nobody is going to have a better look than the umpire that's right there at second that made the call. But I'll leave it at that, Evan, and you can give your thoughts if you want, or we can take the conversation to a different direction. Well, we know a lot of times it's about overturning calls in sports, and if it's not clear or obvious, sometimes they're going to keep that call. Like you said, that second base umpire, the one who's going to have the closest look, so it's a tough one for Lynchburg. A little bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but they will have to swallow it. It is a 1-2 count on Brandon Garcia. Lead-off bunt single for Carson Atkins. Excuse me, not a lead-off bunt single. Holden Fiedler flew out to the center fielder. Here's a bouncing ball right side to Garcia. Could be a tough play, but the first baseman will make the play. Brett Tharp with the grab, steps on the bag, and that is the third out of the inning. So. Not your typical three-up, three-down inning, but Lynchburg only gets to send three hitters to the plate, and we are still scoreless at Fox Field, the campus of the University of Lynchburg. So small controversy in the top of the third inning there as Carson Atkins thought he had a stolen base. Original call was safe. Umpires get together, change it to out. 
I don't even know if I have an opinion, Evan, because it's as close as you can get. The only thing I would say is, again, that second base umpire, that field umpire that's right there, you feel like he's going to have the best look of all, and that was the original call was safe from that umpire. But that's why umpiring's tough right there. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's why I don't umpire. Those like that. That would just make me sick trying to decide that. And you have to decide right away. You can't take five minutes <laughs> to think it over, you know. Oh, absolutely. And not only is it a difficult job, but you have 300, 400 fans behind yeah. you wanting their call. So you just <laughs> got to go with your best judgment. Like you said, sometimes a different angle will tell a different story. As it's going to be a grounder to Garcia, throw to first for out number one. It was close at first. But Garcia rattled that through quick enough. Sure was. Snyder was rolling down the line. Eric Hyatt with a nice play to get up a little bit but stay on the bag as the throw came in over his head. Nick Stavros, the second baseman, will hit now with one gone. Clean sheet so far for Brandon Pond, a fan favorite. We are official scorekeeper and I were, were watching the Hampton Sydney game together and there was a big crowd there to watch Brandon Pond. He had people coming in from old high school friends and stuff, people he hadn't seen in a year or so there just to check out Brandon Pond on the road at Hampton Sydney. He always puts on a show it seems like. Even if he doesn't have the A game, Brandon Pond is gonna, gonna do something to make you keep your eyes on him. Well I don't think he needs an extra incentive to go out there and pitch well but that always adds energy and Pond, one of those guys on the team, awesome personality. He's always going to be willing to talk baseball with you, as are many of these players, and that's just why this game is so fun to watch. Loves working with Holden Fiedler behind the plate. He's one of those guys that has always said that. The catching counterpart for Fiedler is in the batter's box right now. This is number 13, Jonathan Sexton for Bridgewater. He'll turn on that one, sends it into left. Neves saw it, broke on it, and makes the grab for the final out. Another three up, three down inning for Brandon Pond. Still a stalemate here. Everybody blanked through three complete. Feels like we just started a blink of an eye ago, Evan, but the pitchers are really doing their thing. Lynchburg has had two hits. Riley O'Donovan with the double. He got stranded, and then last innings, last inning, excuse me, it was Carson Atkins with that bunt single, but he ends up getting thrown out on the bases on a call that was as close as you can get. Here's Ben Jones to lead off for Lynchburg. We predicted it could be a pitcher's battle, but with Jones, Neves, and Hyatt due up here in the two, three, and four spot, for Lynchburg, we could see some damage here in the top of the fourth. A little weird to say that with Lynchburg playing at their home field, but yeah. obviously Odak uh -oh. tournament. Uh-oh. Benny Bombs has turned on one back to the wall, and it is gone. Another explosion from the freshman from Durham. Benny Bombs solo shot to get Lynchburg on the board. He had an RBI double in the bottom of the eighth yesterday, Evan, that got Lynchburg back within striking distance. Talk about being ready for the moment. Ben Jones, just a freshman. Big games don't bother Benny Bombs a bit. That was nice. No, they do not. And that was home run number seven on the season. Now with the team lead, and if you're Lynchburg, 
It's a 1-0 lead and a great chance to add more. Avery Neves got hit. He's trying to pump the dugout up. How about that? Neves will take the hit by pitch. Looks like it got him right below the belt there in the left glute. I don't think there was, there was any kind of retaliation from Nick Harris at all. I think he just wanted to throw an inside breaking ball and missed, but it certainly fired up the All-American Avery Neves. And then he transferred that passion over to the dugout. He immediately started yelling in the direction of his teammates. He wants a big inning right here. We've touched on it all season, hit by pitch. Not something you can exactly control, but when it happens, you definitely feel like you earned it. Harris is going to try and keep Neves close. We know he has. He leads the team in stolen bases this season. Yeah, and Cameron Lane is the hit-by-pitch leader for Lynchburg on the year with 15, but Avery Neves not far behind. He's been plunked 11 times. So double digits now. And yeah, stolen base leader as well. Mm, nice one there by Harris to throw over, kind of in a weird spot. He really was just kind of getting the sign and noticed Neves wandering off a little bit. So flipped one over to first. I kind of like that. 0-1 count here on Eric Hyatt. Struck out in his first at bat. Getting some like, excitement early here, Evan. Just what, just what you thought would happen, right? Absolutely. And a doubleheader to a potential doubleheader, we should say. If you're Lynchburg, I think in your mind you're trying to think, focus on this one first and add another if you can win it. But this is a very good chance to keep that energy going. We talk about little plays that add momentum, and the Hornets certainly feeling it. 0-2 oh, on Hyatt. Ground ball left side. It got through. Third baseman Jeffrey Snyder was moving to his glove side, and the hop sort of went right over the glove. Feels like it's got to be a base hit, though, don't you think? Evan, it'll be hit number four for Lynchburg. Two of them have been extra base hits. The first one by the guy stepping in the batter's box right now. Number 19, Riley O'Donovan. Feels like you're getting a red wave here. Definitely feels some momentum shifting over to the Lynchburg dugout. And here is a well-placed mound visit from Bridgewater to maybe try to slow down some of that momentum. And you give the pitcher Nick Harris a breather as well. I have to agree, control the heart rate a little bit. Bridgewater still only down one nothing, and even with runners on first and second, you have to really put that past you. Here's the leadoff man, Benny Bombs, number 21, Ben Jones, right fielder going back to track it. Ran out of room there. Wasn't exactly a wall scraper, Evan, but not the longest home run we've seen from Ben Jones. Long enough to get Lynchburg on the board with the one nothing lead. Foxfield, not the easiest place to hit one out, but you mentioned that win going out to right field. Here's Avery Neves on the hit by pitch. Yeah, and then watch this. Just yelling in his own dugout there, trying to get them fired up. And, and that's the passion that you like to see guys play with. Some guys yell at the other team. I like Avery Neves there using the energy and the passion to try to motivate his own ball club. I think that is... A really great way to do that. And another great shot from our LHSN crew who is switched on and ready for this potential doubleheader day here at Fox Field. O'Donovan will take strike one looking. I think that was the same kind of pitch that Harris was trying to throw Neves. That one just broke a little bit more. Talk about Neves firing up this dugout. That's why this team has been so good at Fox Field this season. It just seems that the energy flows all around from the fans to the players to the coaches, and that's why you're a nationally ranked team. But when tournament time comes, obviously Richmond is going to be a neutral site for whoever advances from this series, and so you have to keep it moving on. O'Donovan going to take a look at strike three just on the edge there. Nice spot from Nick Harris and a big out for Bridgewater. It is the first of the inning. It's K number four for Nick Harris. Brings up Gavin Collins. Flew out to the left fielder in his first at bat. He'll hit with runners on first and second. If you're Bridgewater, you got to be careful not to let Neves wander off. Stolen base threat. And that is true even when he's trying to swipe third base as well. And there's a lot of value in getting to third base with one out because then you got to sacrifice fly in play. So let's see if Neves. Tries to bounce off a bit more. 1-0 count on Gavin Collins. That one misses the zone as well. The third baseman for Lynchburg is ahead. Two balls to no strikes. 
you also don't want a wild pitch here because then that takes away the double play threat and chance to get out of the inning for the Eagles. So true. I like what Sexton has done. Really enjoyed watching him in three games now for Bridgewater. He is very solid back there defensively. We saw how quickly he got rid of that ball to throw out Carson Atkins. He can play the other parts of the game as well. First baseman behind Eric Hyde at first base. Collins gets down low to drive that one to left, but B. Secker on for the grab. Another one that Gavin Collins really hit on the nose. He hit that one better than he did his first at bat. But unfortunately, B. Secker with the scouting report and in the right spot. Those are two big outs for Nick Harris, especially having two runners on with no outs after that Ben Jones bomb. So now, if you're Jackson Harding, obviously a single will potentially should score Neves with his speed at second. So you don't necessarily need a big extra base hit, but two runs are a lot more than one on the scoreboard, and I think insurance, though it's early on, is certainly going to help the Hornets. Now you saw Sexton, the catcher for Bridgewater, showing his quality right there. Nice stop to keep that one in front. Runners have to hold. It is a 1-0 count on Jackson Harding. He'll pull one right side. Second baseman makes the grab, and Stavros completes the out by throwing to first base. So it's a 1-0 Lynchburg lead. They do strand two. Here's how they got the one, a big one. Ben Jones, seventh home run of the season to get the Hornets the lead after three and a half at Fox Field. Mini mound meeting to begin the bottom of the fourth inning for Lynchburg. The Hornets find themselves on top for the first time. The 1-0 lead after the solo home run from Ben Jones. There's a fastball inside corner for a strike. It's still Brandon Pond. Nine up, nine down. Second time facing the top of the order here for Brandon Pond. And second time, Jarrett Biesecker is getting a look at Mr. Pond. Well, second time through the lineup, obviously, you'll have a little bit more success. Hold that thought. Lynchburg team arguing that Biesecker was out of the box when that ball hit him. And that would be an out. If you're in the batter's box when the ball hits you, it's just a foul ball. I think they're going to say it's just a foul ball there. Got a little brief look at it there. We'll see. What we can see here from the instant replay, which, of course, the umpires do not have credit for. And that's another one. Very close. I mean, it, he tapped it down. It's going to be a tough play. Jones moving towards the bag. Throws off balance. Got him. Great play there by Ben Jones. He's doing it with bat and ball. Solo homer for Lynchburg. And then a nice play to go backhand, throw across the body back to first base for the out. Well, sometimes those fielding plays can be just as important as the hits you get. And Ben Jones taking away a potential leadoff hit for the Eagles. And now one down for Brett Tharp. 
Here's a great second look at it. Ben Jones on the run there. That is so tough for a second baseman to throw across your body like that. Collins dives. Now it's Garcia. Long throw. Tharp will beat it out. And the no-hitter is gone. That is an infield single for the first baseman, Brett Tharp, who runs really well. Nice job by Tharp to get out of the batter's box quickly. He knew that was going to be a tough play the entire time. So it's a runner on first. First time Brandon Pond has had to get in the stretch set position here with a runner on. There is one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, that's an excellent hustle from Tharp. Leads the team in stolen bases, so you know he's capable of running. And those are little plays that add up by the end of the ball game. You're thinking, well, maybe it's not that important just to get out of the box quickly. But that's what coaches love to see, especially in the tournament. Hard 90s is the term that a lot of teams will yell out down there. And Tharp, an oddity there for your first baseman to lead you in stolen bases. But part of that is because they're trying to save Tharp's arm, Evan. He is also the talented closer for Bridgewater. So you don't really want your closer making a lot of throws from the left side of the diamond over there at third base or short, one of those deals. So, oh, got him leaning, and they oh almost had him at first. Nice move from Brandon Pond. Tharp looked like he was running on that. His first reaction was to drop that shoulder like he was headed to second base on a steal. Nice job by Tharp, really to scramble back and dive in safely. But, yeah, that's part of the reason why a guy with great wheels is playing first base, Brett Tharp. He pitched wonderful yesterday, didn't he? Oh, he did, and it's not easy to slam the door shut on a Hornets squad that is very good in the late innings of a ball game. This Pond's going to throw back over to first. Seen a few good pickoff moves today, and we saw one from Nick Harris trying to get Neves. And like you said, sometimes you wander off a few steps too far. Pond just misses the zone there. And that's another part about Brandon Pond that makes him a complete pitcher. He holds the runners on well. That's an afterthought for a lot of guys. They're just worried about getting hitters out, but Brandon Pond understands that that is part of being the total package and being so good at what he does. He puts the time and the effort into holding runners just uh, maybe not just as much as the pitching, but he definitely is something he has worked on. One, two count with one out. Pond holds, he'll throw over again to try to keep Brett Tharp close over there at first base. First hit of the ball game from Brett Tharp for Bridgewater. And with Hartman in the box right now, you can see why he might be stealing this contact and it's loud. Neves is moving back and he's gonna have it at the warning track. So nice work from Avery Neves. Was just gonna say that Tharp if he steals second and you have Hartman in the box, maybe a chance to get a run, but it's a nice play out and left for Neves to get the second out. Yeah, really composed defending there from Avery Neves. That's a tough one to go back on a ball straight at you. Then all of a sudden, you know in the back of your mind the fence is going to be coming up soon. You feel the warning track maybe. And a nice job, pretty comfortable catch in the end by Avery Neves on a ball off the bat. It looked like it was going to be really tough. There's ball one to Hunter Clever, grounded out to the shortstop in his first at bat. There's two away, still Tharp on first base. He got pretty far, he got, actually got past second base and then really had to turn on the Jets to get back in time. But good base running because you know it's gonna be a very long throw in, a 340 plus throw and there's probably gonna need to be a relay in there as well to get you out at first base on the return. Pond kicks and deals. Tharp was off again, and this will be the second hit of the inning. Neves coming on, and a good job by Tharp to shut it down and not risk getting thrown out at third base. So it's two singles in the inning here for Bridgewater, and they are in business. Two outs for the center fielder, Lucas Bauer. Runners on first and second, definitely a chance to tie this ball game. That hit back to Neves where he made the catch, that was oddly reminiscent of the play against Guilford. If we remember the home run and the base mm. running mishap, mm. one of the plays that you just don't see in baseball very often. Yeah, if you don't remember that one, or maybe you're a Bridgewater fan and you're watching, you don't know what the heck we're talking about. We'll uh, try to recap that as Brandon Pond gets strike one. It was runners on first and third. 
and in Guilford hitter parked one, and it was hard to tell whether Neves caught it or not as he crashed into the fence. The runner on first started going back to first base, ended up crossing paths with the player that hit the home run. And so there ends up being an out recorded. The base runners cannot cross, but the home run stood. So it ended up being a two run homer instead of three. Just one of those rare baseball oddities. We looked up that it had happened to Lou Gehrig one time. Lou Gehrig, he missed out on a home run that would have cost him the home run title. Evan, that was the crazy stat that we found thanks to the LHSN Research Department and our fearless leader, Tim LaDuca. Always doing great work here for us at LHSN. And it goes to show that base running, it's not one of the fancy parts of baseball, but it's important. It can cost you runs. It can cost you home run titles. You just never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's another one that the more you know about the game, the better off you are because I think there's a lot of players that probably don't know that rule because it just rarely comes up. As we get a look at the head man for Lynchburg, Lucas Jones, watching his ball club with a 1-0 lead but trying to hold on to that slim one-run lead here. 2-2 count for Lucas Bauer against Brandon Pond, runners at first and second. Holden Fiedler's the catcher, Pond will step off. And now we'll restart. Let's see what Brandon Pond and Lynchburg's pitching staff dial up here. There's a shot at Michael Solback. He's the one in the middle with the, uh, the black pullover on Pond. Two strike delivery up the middle. Garcia, the shortstop, gets it. High hop, throws across, and the inning is over. Two left stranded in the Bridgewater bottom half of the fourth. Lynchburg leads 1-0 at Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. So a little bit of controversy to end the fourth inning as the runner for Bridgewater going from first to second. That was Hunter Clever. Seemed to be yelling and shouting at the shortstop Brandon Garcia as he made the play. Umpire immediately saw it, noticed it. You could see the umpire pointing Evan, giving Clever just a warning. It wasn't, wasn't ejected from the game, but it was a pretty firm warning. And Lucas Jones came out to have a part of the conversation with Coach Spots and the umpires there. So there is some tension. There is definitely some tension here at Fox Field in this old Dominion Athletic Conference opening weekend quarterfinal, two out of three series. And the, the conversation is still going on there between the umpire and Coach Spots. Well, that's sports and postseason play in a nutshell. Never know what you're going to get, and especially at a time where Bridgewater wins game one, you can maybe feel that you're in the second game against Lynchburg. Tension's definitely going to be high. So if you're the Hornets here batting in the top of the fifth, you have to keep that energy going and try to have it throughout your dugout. I think for the most part, these games have been, have been very sporting, and everybody has been mostly on their best behavior. But yeah, tempers can flare sometimes with conference rivals. Sometimes you don't even have to be a, a rival. And, tempers flare it's a game that means so much to people that sometimes in those situations Evan it brings out the best in people and it also can bring out the worst in people as Fiedler gets under this one right center gap long run for both outfielders in that direction but finally Lucas Bauer hauls it in there to record the first out of the inning not all outs created equally that was a long run from Bauer to get there in right center as you mentioned, though, it's you're going to have tension throughout the postseason, and you see a team so many times in the ODAC, that's just an expectation. And so it's really up to the coaches, Coach Spots and 
Coach Jones to make sure that they manage it well and keep their ball players in this game mentally. It's another tough one for the umpires because not only do you have to call those close plays, then you have to be sort of a, a mediator and a moderator sometimes out there between the players who are getting after it and the coaches as well. Ball one on Carson Atkins. He had to bunt single in his first at bat, so he is one for one, facing Nick Harris for a second time. That one on the inside edge for a strike. It's a one-one count on the center fielder for Lynchburg. Just a one-run lead right now for Lynchburg, but four, five, six have really been innings that they have done well in this season, and I think it's a it has a lot to do with seeing the starter for the second or third time, but also you get a chance to where you can bring in a closer like Jack Batchmore in the late stages and hold on to that lead. So obviously that's why Lynchburg would like to add on now rather than later. Yeah, Batchmore with some work yesterday. I think it ended up being two and a third for Batch, but he is very available again today as Atkins watches this one come in at the eye line for ball three, full count. The nine-hole hitter for Lynchburg. Carson Atkins entered the weekend hitting 309. He'll swing on this and send it to center field. Lucas Bauer pressed into service again, but he'll make another grab for out number two. One center fielder to another. And up steps Brandon Garcia. We mentioned he might have been a little involved in that controversy we had. As we end in the last inning, as you see on your screen, one of those plays that obviously it's a baseball game, it's a long game, you're gonna see people a lot of times, and when you step up to the plate, you gotta have the same approach every time. Yeah, Brandon Garcia is trying to continue that hitting streak as well. I think it's probably out of his memory bank pretty quick, what happened there on the defensive side. Of course, there's the, remember the famous one with A-Rod where he yelled at the fielder catching the pop-up. Um, and there was no no warning or anything from the umpire in that. Um, it was just one of those plays that a lot of people called it Bush League. That was the that was the term that everybody threw around. Just kind of again, not not, not sportsmanlike behavior there. And we don't know exactly what the runner said, but the umpire certainly did not like it, noticed it, and pointed it out quickly. As far as a warning, three one count on the leadoff hitter Brandon Garcia. It's his third at bat. He's 0 for 2. He'll have to stay in the batter's box as that one just nibbles the outer black. It's full with two outs on the freshman from Durham. Big pitch from Nick Harris. Got it where he wanted it. Brandon Garcia turns on it, bangs one into right field. The hit streak continues for Brandon Garcia. He is on with two outs. Make it. 23 in a row now that Brandon Garcia has hit safely. How about that from the freshman? He does it all from a batting standpoint in the field and obviously in the dugout, just getting his guys going. And now you get Ben Jones back in the box, his last at bat, homer to right. So we'll see if he can cause some damage again. Got to be very careful if you're Nick Harris. That one's in for a strike. Good pitch there. This Lynchburg lineup asks so many questions of a pitcher. How, how are you going to get them out? They will take the walks if you don't throw strikes. They'll take the hit by pitch if you run one in the batter's box. Ben Jones took a good cut at that. Got the umpire. And he's staying down. So here we go. Another spotlight on our umpires, Evan, and another reason why it's so tough. You got to make the close calls. You got to put up with the fans and the coaches and the players <laughs> yelling at you. And then you get hit by a ball. I mean, it's just a not, it is just, it is a thankless job, really. So I'll send a thank you out to our umpires. <laughs> thank you for doing what you do as uh, our athletic trainer, Dane Bauer there, gets a, a look at the umpire. I think he's okay, just taking a moment to compose himself. I mean, it is, it is a tough gig, Evan. They do not get paid enough might be the toughest job in baseball aside from anything that these teams have to offer and that's nice work by the athletic trainer everybody just taking a few seconds you want to make sure that he has enough time it's also like you see in games sometimes where the catcher will step out yeah. for a second let everyone have a breather well I just think officiating wise I mean name a tougher sport to to officiate you know no offense to the 
to the basketball refs and the, and the, guy, the guys and gals that do football and all the other sports. But it, I don't know that there's any other sport where officiating you put your body on the line the way a home plate umpire does in baseball. Well, and you're calling something every single play. Yeah. And lots of times, obviously, we know plays like football, you blow the whistle, you put the football down, but yeah. it's just not the same. No, no, it's not. Yeah, I mean, home plate umpire, it's it's – 300 plus pitches in a baseball game sometimes you know and you're and sometimes they get it perfect or sometimes they miss like one you know you see those charts that uh, that MLB releases as far as the strike zone sometimes the umpire will have like one missed call in a, in a baseball game and that's just unbelievable really unbelievable is an overused word but it's just shocking that you could get that many calls right but they do and that's that's why they're so underappreciated one two count now on Ben Jones Garcia takes off. Jones pulls this one. If it stays fair, it could be a chance for Garcia to score, but it will just arc foul. We'll have to try it all over again. It was down in that right field corner, but it did not stay in play. That's a good place to try and park one, maybe by the warning track, because then you get a chance to send the runner from third home, and we know Garcia with his speed running from first might have had a shot. Yeah, he was running on the pitch, too. Let's see if Garcia takes off again. Probably still slightly winded. One-two count again on Ben Jones. Here's the pitch from Harris. Outside, just missed. 2-2 two -two on Benny Bombs, who has a bomb. Double yesterday and a home run. His slugging percentage is through the roof. we got to recalculate it here in between innings. Harris set, quick hold. That hit Ben Jones. Yeah, I don't know if the umpire was just waiting to make the call, but Jones knew it, and you could see it bounce and carry him off the front foot. So it's a hit by pitch. That's back to Lynchburg's offensive game plan. They'll just stay in there and not get out of the way when you miss one in the other batter's box. And Avery Neves, speaking of, he's been hit in this game and also struck out. So 0 for 1 in two plate appearances. This is a big chance for Neves. We know that he's capable of coming through RBI situations. I don't think we have to mention that, but as an All-American, you're going to garner some respect, hence potentially a pitching change for the Eagles. It's either a change or a reminder of the game plan for Nick Harris. It's a good place to do it with Avery Neves up there. They'll bring the entire infield in on this one. There's two outs in the top of the fifth inning. Lynchburg is leading 1-0. Brandon Pond had a no-hitter going through the first three. He surrendered two singles in the bottom of the fourth, but no damage done by Bridgewater. Lynchburg has four hits as a team. They've left three on. Gotten a runner thrown out stealing. That was Carson Atkins after a bunt single. Brandon Garcia having a laugh with the field umpire there, so... That's always nice when you see that. The tension's getting cooled a bit for umpires and players alike. And hopefully everybody's enjoying it outside. Need to send our shout out to Scott Fiedler, who is unable to watch the game in person, but a monster Hornets fan. We know he is tuned in. He's turned all the folks around him into Lynchburg fans, I'm sure. They're probably, they're probably sporting red here on this Sunday, just like Lynchburg. It's almost the Tiger Woods mentality today. Right, right. I got to send a shout out to a buddy of mine who is a Bridgewater alum and a Lynchburg alum, Evan. I'll, I will get to that here maybe uh, in, bet in between innings or something like that. Here's Avery Neves. Same pitch that hit him. It was a twister that starts behind his body, and the hope is that you break it on the inside part of the plate, but just did not hook enough there for Harris, so it's ball one. Neves will swing on that. Another breaking ball again, so that seems to be part of the playbook. Don't give them any fastballs to look at, at least not over the plate. And what we talked about yesterday, if you're going to miss, make sure that it's not hittable, especially against a guy like Neves who can make some contact. 1-1 one, one count for Neves. Another breaking ball in the dirt. But yeah, it's, it's a classic pitching plan against a great hitter, Evan. Fastballs off the plate, breaking balls on the plate. Because you still would like to change speeds a little bit to keep them off balance, but you don't want to show them a good fastball. It was a breaking ball again. It's actually been four in a row. 2-2 two -two count 
for Avery Neves with a runner on second and first. This is a time in the ball game that's so important because you're one pitch from getting out of the inning or you could be one pitch away from having a four run ball game. Yeah, that's a great, great way to phrase it right there. A lot riding on this at bat, high leverage kind of at bat. Garcia bouncing off at second. Another breaking ball in the dirt, five in a row. Full count now, runners will get a head start. It's Garcia at second and Ben Jones at first. Avery Neves the hitter facing freshman Nick Harris on the mound for Bridgewater. Here's the pitch. That looked to be a fastball, outer part of the plate. And we'll have to try it again as Neves fouls it away. Runners on the move on the pitch, so if you get a chance to get one in the gap too, you're gonna have both runners scoring. Widow Jones is on first, Garcia on second. Harris kicks and fires, breaking ball that missed. Good eyeball from Avery Neves, one of the best all time at knowing the strike zone and pitch recognition. And it will load the bases for Eric Hyatt. He's one for two with a single and a strikeout. Long inning now for Nick Harris. That's what you worry about a little bit for Bridgewater as well. You can survive an inning where you give up one hit and face four batters, but it's actually turned into a longer inning now. This is the sixth hitter that Lynchburg has sent to the plate. Eric Hyatt will swing on the first one. Ground ball to short. They toss it to second for the final out of the inning. So the Eagles get out of that one unscathed. That Lynchburg still leading 1-0 at Fox Field. And we are getting it to you on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Six, seven, eight, due up for the Eagles here in the bottom half of the fifth. Evan Gates, Kyle Haney taking you through the action. It's game two of a potential three-game series between the Hornets and the Eagles. We've had lots of fun early on. Brandon Pond still on the mound as Isaac Sumter steps up to the plate. Quick shout out to my buddy Matt Nolan, who is a great pitcher for Bridgewater uh, mid-2000s. Hold that thought, Matt Nolan. Garcia's throw over to first, it was high, and it took Hyatt off the base. So it's gonna be a lead off single, or it might be an error on the throw. We'll have to wait for the ruling on that one. But either way, the Eagles have Sumter on to begin the fifth. So Matt Nolan was at Bridgewater. I think it was, I think it was 03 to 07-ish for Matt Nolan. Left-handed pitcher, great pickoff move. We suspect he might be the all-time leader in pickoffs for a pitcher at Bridgewater. We're not sure about that. So you get a bunt here. Got to hold the Matt Nolan Snyder conversation again. got a again. good one down, and it's going to be no throw to first. Mm. So just like that, Bridgewater trying to get the momentum in their favor, and now two on. As we start the bottom of the fifth, Nick Stavros will be up. They just don't allow you to finish your thoughts. No, I think we'll just put it on hold unless we get a mound visit at this point because – Business is picking up for the Eagles. Stavros hitting with nobody out. Runners at first and second. Might be sack bunt time again for Bridgewater, Evan. We'll see. We've seen it quite a bit throughout the season. He is showing bunt. We'll see what Pond throws. And it's going to get foul. You also wonder with two strikes if that approach stays the same. 
different plays all around. We saw Guilford did that with two strikes and was able to execute. Yeah, yeah, that was fun, and, and that is a, a, an interesting thing to keep an eye out for. See if Lynchburg maybe changes up the coverage. It looked like both corners were crashing there, Collins and Hyatt. And it might have hit him. See if it hit the bat. And he will be awarded first. So now the bases are loaded. And Lucas Jones is going to have a chat with the umpire. Yeah, the umpire actually called his crewmates in even before Lucas Jones got out there. So we've got another call that is somewhat controversial, somewhat 50-50. It's one of these calls that each set of fans is going to think it should have gone their way. Here's another great look at it. Squares to bunt. Pitch comes in. Does it hit the hand or does it hit the bat is the question. And then you've also got the aspect of if you're attempting to bunt it, Evan, it really doesn't matter if it missed the bat because it's the same thing as a swinging strike that hits you. If you swing, there's no hit by pitch. So if you attempt to bunt, it would be the same way, no hit by pitch. But the umpire thinks that it was a pullback and a non-bunt attempt, so it's just a hit by pitch. Stavros is on. The bases are loaded for Bridgewater. Very well said as you have to pull that bat back, bunting one of the most difficult things to do in baseball. But it brings up the nine hole, Jonathan Sexton, with the bases loaded. So the first time that Pond has really had to work through trouble today, we know in the fourth, he allowed two singles. Yeah, there was one runner left in scoring position there in the fourth. This is a big test for Brandon Pond in the Lynchburg defense. Pond with the pitch. It's going to be caught a strike, so 1-1 one, one count. Here, if you're Lynchburg, you'd love a pop-up or a punch-out. Chance to keep the runners where they're standing. Corners are in. Could see a play at the plate. Sexton flew out in the third inning, so 0 for 1 day so far. And a big chance to change that as Lynchburg clings to a one-run lead. So many different looks a team can offer. Here with no outs, Sexton. It's a pitch over his head. Yeah, that one dangerous there for both teams. Sexton, you got to get the bat down. Don't want to risk a foul ball or even actually going in play on a ball over your head. And it's close to a hit by a pitch there again for Brandon Pond. 2 2. Another one fouled off. Action in the Lynchburg bullpen, as we mentioned. Pretty much everyone outside of Zach Potts will be fresh today, so expect to see a few different looks. Associate head coach Travis Beasley, who works with the pitchers, likes matchups, likes throwing out different pitchers, even if it's four in that bat or two. The pitch from Pond. And this one is loud contact, but it will go foul. It was very close in left field. Yes, yeah, Sexton turned on it. He didn't leave the batter's box, so I think he knew it was going to be foul. Brandon Pond would have known that based on Sexton's reaction, but never going to make you feel warm and fuzzy as a pitcher to give up a long one like that, even when it's foul. 2-2 Two -two count. And it's a pop-up. It's going to be out to Atkins and center. Will there be a throw home? Yes, here it comes. And the runner will score. So just a little late, the game is tied, and it's a whole new ball game. And Bridgewater still in business, just one out in the bottom of the fifth. Lynchburg going to throw down to third just in case the runner might have left early. Umpires say safe. Good job by Sexton. Knows the situation, knows he can get a ball elevated. Sumter is the shortstop for Bridgewater. He was the one tagging at third. So good wheels there, good arm in center field with Carson Atkins. And in the end, it's a run and a tie ball game. Now you turn things over to Jared B. Secker. Very talented part of this Bridgewater lineup, batting 370. He started every game, throw back to second. Not going to get him. B. Secker, Clever, and Hartman have started every game this season. They're all three in the lineup today as well. Goes to show the trust this coaching staff has in them. Yeah, they're all hitting in the top four in the order as well. Oh, Fiedler with a good stop, but he lost sight of it. It did not carry him in the direction that he was anticipating. It bounced over behind Biesecker, and the runners with a good advance right there. 
to take advantage of just a slight misplay from Feather. You really can't even call it a misplay. I think he was in pretty good textbook blocking position. All right, Pond's going to have to dig deep here. He may not quite empty the tank, but he's going to really pull something from the reserves. This one will go foul. So double play is gone, two runners in scoring position. Bridgewater with a single has a chance to score two. As you said, this is a very big test for Brandon Pond. Yeah, I don't think you're quite on the on the emergency battery right here, but he's he's going to really pull a lot emotionally and physically for this one. Nice pitch. Everything staying in front of you right now if you're holding Fiedler, just trying to block it, not allow that runner to get home because, yes, it's the fifth inning. You have more at-bats to come, but like we've said, Lynchburg likes to take the lead and try to set the table for later in the ball game. Infield is in. Pond with the pitch, B. Secker. It's going to be caught by Garcia. Double him up at third. That is a huge play for the Lynchburg Hornets, and they will get out of the inning just allowing one run. So it's a tie ball game as we head into the top of the sixth from Fox Field. Lynchburg will be up to bat. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. In steps number 19, the designated hitter, Riley O'Donovan, as we lead off the top of the sixth. It's another close game at Fox Field, and we love getting to watch all the action. Kyle, really all season long, it seems like there haven't been too many blowouts in the second portion of the season. Obviously, you're opening up conference play, but then you have some really tough opponents, and everyone is starting to know what they're capable of. Yeah, Lynchburg is 7-1. and one, No, excuse me, 6-2 and two in one-run games this year, Evan. They lost a one-run game yesterday. So that's eight games decided by one run as O'Donovan will be down swinging. And then my little four runs or less mark, Lynchburg is now 17 and six in games decided by four runs or less. So that's, that's 23 ball games of what, 39 that have been decided by four or less, one swing of the bat basically. And that just goes to show with Lynchburg, obviously you're a talented ball club, but it's baseball. You're not gonna have runaway games all the time and those are the types of games that really make a difference in times like the ODAC tournament. As Gavin Collins has stepped in, one down for the Hornets, and he's going to be gone on strikes so quickly, two outs. And it's going to turn things over to Jackson Harding, the right fielder. Two big Ks from Nick Harris. He struck, coming into the game, struck out 46 and only walked 10. So you know he's got electric stuff as Coach Lucas Jones is going to have a chat with Jackson Harding, maybe try to break the rhythm and the momentum of Nick Harris. But I mean, he's a strikeout kind of a guy. That is punch outs. It looks like five and six now as O'Donovan and Collins go down swinging. And for reference, Nick Harris has walked one. He's hit two, but only walked one. So those K to walk ratio numbers are still looking good for the starting pitcher, Nick Harris. And he has six straight strikes. To begin the sixth inning, here's Jackson Harding. That's going to go away with the pitch outside. 
So here in the sixth inning, it's going to be an interesting look here for the Hornets. How do you respond? How do you keep the energy going? We know that late in the ball game, yes, they have the batters to come back. Obviously, if there wasn't an interference call yesterday, we might have had a whole different ball game. But at the same time, you can't wait too long. It's an elimination game for Lynchburg, not so for Bridgewater. Bridgewater only needs to win one today to advance to the next round of the ODAC tournament. Lynchburg needs to win two. Pitch from Harris, and it got him. Outside part of the plate, three up, three down, and a very solid inning of work for Nick Harris as we head into the bottom of the sixth here on LHSN. It's a 1-1 ball game. Welcome back on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Nick Harris is doing very well on the mound here still in the sixth inning. He was able to retire back to back to back out on strikes. So Brandon Pond is going to try and see what he can do to come back. It's Josh Jorman, a defensive substitution at first base. Eric Hyatt was occupying first before, so Looks like it should be a straight substitution. We'll have to wait until the batting half of the inning to see what the coaches have in store. But a 1-1 ball game, and Brett Tharp is up to bat. The other first baseman for Bridgewater. Don't see any other defensive changes, so it would have to be just Jorman swapping in for Hyatt. Hyatt will finish the day one for three with a single and a K. And speaking of Ks, Nick Harris now 53 on the season to only 11 walks. So you know he's got strikeout stuff, and he seems to have it going today. He surrendered one run, a couple little other danger spots, but just one run, the home run from Ben Jones. Lynchburg has stranded six. Lynchburg is a team that takes quite a few, of, quite a few walks, and it's an important way to get on base, so solid work from Harris today and getting those strikeouts working efficiently. There have been a couple hit by pitches and a walk, so three free passes have been issued, but either way, still 1-1. Pond with the pitch outside. We've got a 2-2 count. Yeah, Brandon Pond not exactly taking a back seat in the pitching conversation. He has only surrendered three hits for Lynchburg. And he went, so strike three, Tharp. Didn't like it. So slowly walks out of the batter's box and it will bring up Brandon Hartman, the DH. Third punch out for Brandon Pond. And a big one to get Tharp erased. Brandon Hartman will have to hit with nobody on and one out. And that's, if you're the Hornets, a very welcome sight to not have runners on the bases when he steps up because we know the damage that he can cause Historically, he's been very good for Bridgewater, tied for 10th in batting average for a single season. That was based on that average in the regular season, batting 414. Leads the team in doubles with 21 and RBIs with 42. And Pond not afraid to throw to him. Yeah, Pond really good from the windup. He's, he's not bad from the stretch, but uh, when he's in the windup, He's got that extra stuff, a little extra giddy up, a little extra snap on the slider, it feels like. 
And that's what good pitchers do. It's this part of the ball game where you have coaches trying to figure out the best option. You have to show them that you are willing, not only willing to stay in the game, but that you're going to perform when you're still on the mound. Yeah, you and I just briefly in the timeout there discussed how Brandon Pond would have been telling the coaches in the dugout, hey, I'm good, keep me in, I'm good to go. Another strikeout. And that's a big one back to back for Brandon Pond. It's going to bring up Hunter Clever in right field today. He's one for two with a ground out and a single. Pond after that pitch took a stroll off the mound, but had a few words to say to Hartman as he walked back to the dugout. Yeah, Brandon Pond has now been issued the warning. We saw base runner get issued a warning earlier in the game for Bridgewater. And now it's Brandon Pond that has been issued the warning, and that is something that the umpire officially records. And Lucas Jones getting out uh, of the dugout to just get the explanation there. I think just a little something from Brandon Pond after the strikeout. And again, that's Pond. He plays the game with that passion. He wears the emotions on his sleeve without knowing what he said. Uh, you know, I can't give an opinion one way or the other as to whether it was anything unsportsmanlike or not, but I think his point to the umpire there, at least judging from body language, was, hey, you know, I'm just I'm pumped up. I'm getting into it. It wasn't anything personal. But, again, the umpire's opinion is the only one that matters, Evan. Absolutely, and when you retire someone like Brandon Hartman, who's batting as well as he has, obviously you want to keep that adrenaline a little bit. But... It's an ODAC tournament game, and that's to be expected. Pond a pitch away from getting out of the inning. It's quickly an 0-2 count on Clever. Three strikeouts for Harris. See if Pond can do the same. A foot foul. O2 count again. The umpire's got to reload on baseballs because there's been so many knocked foul. But yeah, we, it, pitchers duel early. We're seeing it again. Both teams have had some major chances, and it's a 1-1 game, so runs have come across. But overall, these two starting pitchers have really dominated things. As we forecasted, Pond going to throw outside. We've seen a few hits, too, that might, might have been hits. They ended up being foul, but some close ones down the line. So not short on contact, but the pitchers have been good at minimizing what's been done with it. There's strike three, so three strikeouts of his own for Brandon Pond and a very solid half inning of work. As we head to the seventh, it's still 1-1 one -one on the Lawrenceburg Hornets Sports Network. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Welcome back to Fox Field. There were six strikeouts total in that sixth inning. And here are the three from Brandon Pond. He just continues to work effectively. And every single at bat giving a different pitch, a different look. And he is keeping the energy. We love it here in ODAC tournament time. It's it, always an exciting time. Yeah, and you could see there as he was walking off, Pond patted the chest and gave the little my bad signal to the umpire as he got the warning earlier for, for being a little too vocal on a celebration after a strikeout. So back to the great sportsmanship, Pond coming off. Hey, my bad, sorry about that. Everything's good. You love to see it, you love to see it. And I think it just makes the game much smoother. 
Keep the tensions down a little bit. It's an elimination game for Lynchburg. It's a big one for Bridgewater. They're trying to spring what would be a pretty big upset. Bridgewater's the eighth seed. I don't think we're overstating that or anything, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it would be the biggest upset of all time, but Bridgewater's the eighth seed. Lynchburg's the one seed, so uh, it would definitely count as a pretty big upset. No doubt about it, and just from observation, I think – this Lynchburg team has a very different level of focus today because, yes, you have been on a win streak before this one but haven't lost one at home, and so maybe a little bit of an eye-opener yesterday. Fiedler is going to fly out to right. Clever has it for out number one. I'll bring in the nine-hole Carson Atkins. He has, so far, a single and a pop-up to center. Stolen base in the third as well. Then it was actually ruled an out. If you remember, that was the big replay we showed you. So that's part of baseball as we go back and forth. Atkins is going to have his second hit of the day. And he will turn things over to Brandon Garcia and the top of the Hornets lineup. Carson Atkins, a threat to run that may be on hold because of the fact he was thrown out earlier in the game. That was in the top of the third inning where he got a bunt single but left on or uh, erased because of the caught stealing on a play where we thought he had the stolen base. So let's keep an eye on Carson Atkins and obviously you're keeping an eye on Brandon Garcia one for three so far today. And the hit streak extended Atkins is going to get back. It would be Ben Jones who is on deck. So if Garcia can get on certainly Power at the top of this Lynchburg lineup today, moving Jones to the second spot in the lineup. Yeah, and that's paid off with the solo home run there for Ben Jones. Only run that has come across for Lynchburg. They had some real momentum in that inning. Got a couple runners on after that, but couldn't get any more. We're knotted at one apiece. It's been the story of the ball game so far. We've seen a few situations that could have proven to be dangerous, but the pitchers have done a phenomenal job of getting out of it. And right now Harris here in the seventh inning is still working pretty efficiently. Well, and that sixth inning blew me away for both guys. Both, both pitchers struck out all three. So they combined for six Ks in the sixth inning. Conventional wisdom as Harris gets a breaking ball in for a strike. Conventional wisdom, Evan says, pitcher's going to be tiring. Batters have gotten longer looks. Batters know what you have. It should be harder to strike guys out, not easier as the game goes on. Atkins a long lead at first, but will stay put. One, two count on Garcia. I think you're absolutely right. We talked about how you get more looks at a pitcher, and that really plays to the batter's favor. And Garcia will get one into the outfield, and that was extremely close to <laughs> interference again. Yeah, bad memories from yesterday if you're a Lynchburg fan on that ball in the bottom of the ninth that hit Gavin Collins, but Atkins able to dance over it. It's back-to-back -back singles for Brandon Garcia. Another multi-hit game for Brandon Garcia. Make that 13 total this season now for the freshman, and we may be getting a pitching change. I think it's going to be a double switch, yeah, because Coach Spots is going to talk to the home plate umpire first. That's your key right there. So there will be a double switch and a pitching change involved, Evan. And it's been a very nice day so far for Nick Harris on the mound. The freshman who will have six and a third innings of work. So as Harris comes out of the ball game, he gave up just three hits to Lynchburg, one run. He'll be responsible for the runners on first and second. Is Brett Tharp, is it Brett Tharp time again, maybe? First baseman going to pitch, possibly through the last couple innings yesterday. Still waiting on something official. 11 is going to right field, we're being told. That is Hartman. Brandon Hartman, yeah, okay. Yeah, the DH is going into the game. Hartman's going into the game in right field. So there is a lot going on. Something in college baseball you don't see as much maybe at the professional level as 
having a few defensive substitutions when you sub out a pitcher. Yeah, Hunter Clever has gone to first. Isaiah Blanks has come into the game. And it is the closer, Brett Tharp, going from first base to the mound for Bridgewater. So the second time in as many days that we have seen the side armor, Brett Tharp. And he got the save yesterday, and it was a crucial one. Not only did it solidify the result for game one, but he also stayed pretty comfortable out on the mound and didn't allow Lynch Lynchburg to cause too much damage in the late stages of that ball game. Yeah, Tharp's got electric stuff. Really keeps it low in the zone. He comes from that low arm slot. And the ball just seems to stay down there a lot. It's like he releases it knee height and it just kind of stays there. And it really flattens out, becomes difficult to hit. He's got the break and stuff to go along with it. And all the numbers back up everything we just said about Brett Tharp in his career. He's eight and seven with now 24 saves. Struck out over 80 and only walked 35. That's in the career. His very solid results. Coming into the weekend, a 261 ERA. And he is going to have to face Vinny Bombs to get things started with one out here in the seventh inning. Again, if you're just joining us, Lynchburg batting in the top half, though they are technically the home team here at Fox Field. That's ODAC tournament standard. And his first pitch is in there for a strike. Jones in the at-bat yesterday doubled off Tharp. And he has a chance for another, but it looks like it's going to stay up for the center fielder. Atkins will tag for third. So now the go-ahead run is standing on third base with the All-American Avery Neves stepping up to the plate. Now at bat, number 30, Runners at the corners. Back-to-back -back singles from Carson Atkins. Inning started with a fly out from Holden Fiedler. Two down for number 30, Avery Neves. Avery Neves, one of the guys that can do it all around the lineup. He steals bases, he has power, he works well in left field, and a chance to propel the Hornets into the weed. So it looks like there's gonna be a little discussion on the mound. For good reason too, obviously you wanna talk strategy, but even though you have runners on the corners, you still wanna make sure that Tharp comes into this ball game and feels comfortable because after facing Jones as your first at bat, you have an All-American stepping in next. You just want to make sure that you're confident in what you're throwing. Yeah, high baseball IQ there from the catcher, Jonathan Sexton. Very smart. Tharp is the guy. Tharp has been in this situation a lot as a closer. Pressure, pressure time here in the seventh inning and later. But always nice to get a reminder about where, what do we want to do with Avery Neves. It was a steady diet of breaking balls for the last at bat from Avery Neves. Another one down for ball one. Strikeout hit by pitch and a walk. So he's 0 for 1 on the official line. Looking to get his first hit of the ball game. Nice swing, but it's going to be by him for a strike. Got to have your defense set here on the first to third steal, double steal type of play. Another one. We've seen that double steal a few times this season. It's conventional part of what Lynchburg tries to do. But with two outs, Garcia's going and he might be in a rundown. It's a balk, they've called a balk. Tharp twitched when Garcia broke and that, that is a play, that early break that a lot of coaches call a forced balk play because you want the pitcher to twitch and not step off cleanly and I think we're gonna get a second look at it and here comes Ben Spots again to talk to the umpire. Umpire called it pretty cleanly, pretty early there. But Garcia leaves early. If he doesn't balk, then yeah, you can see the hands move up slightly. You see that, Evan? And, and I think the umpire got it right. And, and again, I know it's probably my opinion. If you're a Bridgewater fan, you disagree with that opinion. But that slight move of the hands up and then a non-continuous motion. If Tharp moves the hands and then continues to pitch, he's fine but he moved the hands up and then stopped. And I think the umpires got that exactly right. Lynchburg leads two to one and still a threat here with Neves. Didn't look like a clean way to get off the mound. So one of those things box, maybe the hardest call in baseball, but either way, Lynchburg has the lead. And Neves still at the plate, pitch in the dirt. 
for a full count. Garcia was as energized as anyone in this ballpark, and that's something you love to see, just what he brings to this team and what plays he can make. Looks like they're going to put Neves on now with a base open. Count had run full. Tharp, the pitcher, may not agree with that decision. But Coach Spots saying, let's just give Neves the free pass, start a new hitter here with Josh Jorman. Josh Jorman did enter defensively for Eric Hyatt, but he will hit now with runners on first and second. Great point about the energy from Brandon Garcia. Even when he was hurt, he was one of the loudest guys out of the dugout, one of the first guys to pop out of the dugout when the inning ended. He's trying to get the crowd more involved, trying to raise the roof a bit. Pitch in there for a strike to Joyman. As you mentioned, his first at bat of the game also played yesterday. Tharp, one of those guys that might take a few pitches to get a read on, and obviously you're still looking from the on-deck circle, but with his arm angle, you're going to see different pitches. Jorman swings and grounded to first for routine out number three. But a balk brings in a run for Lynchburg. They're up two to one, and it was a big one. Stretch time here from Foxfield. We'll be right back. It's a tournament environment here at Foxfield, and for good reason. A solid half of the inning where the Hornets took the lead on a balk that drove in the run from third. It will be Lucas Bauer to lead things off for the Bridgewater half of the seventh. They'll be followed up by Isaac Sumter and Jeffrey Snyder. Garcia going to have a throw over to first round number one so quickly. One down. Brandon Pond still on the mound, and he's still working well. Exactly the start, of, start right there if you want. Let's try that again. It's exactly the start to the inning that you want if you're Brandon Pond. That's what I meant to say. Nice work by Brandon Garcia coming on quickly to make the throw on the run. Sumter so far today reached on an error in the fifth, ground out in the second. So still looking for that first hit of the ball game. And he's going to get it. Right into center. Atkins will fumble it, but will keep Sumter at first. Yeah, pretty sharp there from Sumter. Short stop for Bridgewater. And now it's Jeffrey Snyder who is one for two. Sumter didn't, well, really, Bauer and Sumter didn't waste any time. Those first pitches. and. This is a part of the ball game for Brandon Pond. You know he can go deep. He had those inning restrictions early in the season, so he hasn't seen too many reps of going far in ball games. But you know he's capable, and he's proving to this coaching staff that he still has his normal stuff. Yeah, it's 84 pitches now for Brandon Pond after that one. I think anything under 100, he's probably good, and even, even over 100 potentially. That's just a decision. That there's a lot of factors will go into that. We'll wait and see if, if we end up talking about it or not. 
pitch, low to Snyder. He faced the minimum through three innings too, so that yeah. definitely helped the pitch count. Just go back to that play in the last inning just a little bit. It may seem an unconventional way to get a run, but if you talk to any college baseball player or coach, they will tell you there's a reason why you practice that situation a whole lot at first to third defense with an early break from the runner at first. Try to leave early, and, and it's still a good play because even if the pitcher doesn't balk, then you get hung up in a rundown between first and second to try to get the runner from third in that way as Brandon Pond just barely misses the zone. So it's a play defensively you have to be well schooled on, and offensively there's, there's some technique in it as well. But I think a good way to get a run, Lynchburg proved it there. Initial thought was that it was a rundown. Again, going back to that double steal, sometimes coaches will try to pull that out for Lynchburg. It's a 3-1 count. It would be a big inning here if Pond can get through it. We know that Lynchburg has options in the bullpen. See if Jack Batchmore comes back in. He worked yesterday. But for now, it's Pond who will issue the walk. So runners on first and second. And it will be Jonathan Sexton. Looks like Mason McDowell also getting loose in the Lynchburg bullpen. Pond looked in the dugout after the walk. And again, just reading body language, not able to be inside his head. I think the idea is, I'm good. Don't come out here and get me. Let me, let me work through this. But we'll see. Might have change here. Looks like Holden Fiedler just wants to talk with Pond. Correction, it's Nick Stavros up to bat. Sexton will be on deck. So just a quick conversation here between the battery mates. It's been a very interesting game so far as has every single game at Fox Field. It just seems that there's something every inning and with Lynchburg baseball, it's been so much fun to watch this season and around the ODAC. Something unique every game and we will get to visit from associate head coach Travis Beasley now. This this might be a change. Yes, he has alerted the umpire. It will be a change. Pond is out. He will exit with the lead. I think very effective work from Brandon Pond. Got to feel really good about what he gave you. If you're a Lynchburg fan or a coach, he surrenders. It looks like just four hits. Is that right? Just four hits Brandon Pond gave up. Walked one there. So back-to-back base runners reach, but Brandon Pond, tip your cap to him. This is all off of an injury and a, and a tough injury, a labrum tear that a lot of guys don't ever make it back from, Evan. Pond is back. He may not quite have what he wants, but he's got enough to keep you in the game, a real competitor. Well, six and a third for both starters today, and what you mentioned about Brandon Pond, it's not an easy rehab process either way, but to have to do it alone, you know that your teammates are there, but when the season starts, you're still finishing up the rehab process, getting the arm right. And so it's something that takes so much more confidence and courage than people might anticipate. As always, we're playing the Jack today. Jack Batchmore is back out there for Lynchburg. Jack of Diamonds takes the ball for Lynchburg. Both teams have got their closers in the game here in the seventh inning. Lynchburg with the one run lead. Batchmore getting his first loss of the season yesterday. Tough one to swallow if you're batch, but sometimes you need that. You need that motivation. I heard a good one the other day, Evan, and that, that was the phrase that talent needs trauma. Talented people need some things to not go their way to get motivated again, because sometimes when you're really good, when you've been perfect on the season, Sometimes you can take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit, lose a little bit of focus. So that, that phrase, talent needs trauma, I think that goes for individuals on this Lynchburg team and the team as well. Sometimes a loss, not necessarily the worst thing in the world. And maybe, maybe that'll be the case with Jack Batchmore. We'll see how he follows it up here. He inherits a couple runners, one on first, one on second. And it is a... Pinch hitter, it is, I think it's, yeah, Camden Heron will hit for Bridgewater. Very good point about this Lynchburg squad. Having to come back today, it's a big test 
of their resilience. As Heron steps up to the plate. First pitch from Batchmore in there for a strike. Heron on the season batting 265 coming into the weekend. Started eight on the season. Again, trying to give some different looks, but obviously a new pitcher out there. We'll change it for Lynchburg. One down, two on, and the bottom of the seventh. We've got a one-run ball game. Lynchburg is the fourth-ranked team in the country, so some of our baseball fans that are plugged in might be saying, well, they're going to get an at-large bid into the regional. They don't need to win the ODAC tournament. But that's not always the case, especially when you have three ranked teams in the ODAC, Shenandoah, Randolph-Macon, and then also Lynchburg. You're only going to have one tournament winner. And if you get something where a team other than those three teams wins the tournament, all of a sudden they're getting the automatic bid. And then how many at-large bids will they hand out? So you really never know. One, two count for Batchmore. It's one of those situations where you don't want to leave it in the hands of someone else. You want to do it yourself. And the ODAC tournament, all tournaments for the postseason and NCAA where you get a chance to make the bid, that's something that is so special. And I think an auto bid, though it's still a very long ways away for both of these teams, is the optimal result. Batchmore with the pitch. Another pop-up foul towards Wake Fieldhouse, and we'll do it again. Yeah, don't leave it in the hands of a selection committee to look at your numbers and look at your resume and schedule and compare and contrast with other teams. Don't leave it there. Try to get that automatic bid. And yeah, if you're Bridgewater, that's the only way they're going to get in. So they are definitely playing for that, that fact. Strike three called. Batchmore got him for out number two. So Stavros is, excuse me, that was Heron retired. And now Jonathan Sexton will step in in the nine hole. Got the only RBI of the game for Bridgewater. That was on a sacrifice fly back in the fifth inning. Lynchburg scored one in the top of the fourth. Bridgewater one in the bottom of the fifth. Lynchburg scored their other run in the top of the seventh. All zeros other than that. Another strike from Batchmore. As we've said all season, he's been in these situations, but experience always needs another game, another chance. And Batchmore trying to get out of the inning cleanly. Biesacker will be on deck. Be ideal to have Biesacker lead off next inning and not hit with runners on. especially in this two-out situation. See what Sexton does. He swings for strike two. Sexton and Fiedler, both very good backstops for these two ball clubs. And it's a characteristic of a successful team having a trusted battery. That's more set. And he's going to get strike three. Lots of energy for Lynchburg. Lots of energy for Jack Batchmore. As we end the bottom of the seventh, Lynchburg's up 2-1 from Foxfield on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
We've jammed a lot of fun in less than two hours here. We started this game at 11 a.m. today, moved it up one hour because of some potential rainy weather coming into Central Virginia. Lynchburg right now holding on to the slimmest of leads, 2-1. O'Donovan will swing on the first one. Eight up, Heron. Camden Heron in the ball game playing second base, and that one got him in the gut. Good hard shot from Riley O'Donovan. It'll go down as an error, but you gotta like it if you're O'Donovan. You hit it hard on the nose, high exit velocity. And that's when coaches talk about hitting it through somebody. Riley O'Donovan did that right there. And with Tharp's arm angles, it's a great way to start the inning just to see contact off the bat and know that you're able to get something started. Not a easy way to come into the ball game if you're Heron, but you have to have short-term memory and put it behind you. Pinch runner in the game for Lynchburg, Ethan Smith. We've seen this move quite a bit. Hesitate to call him a, a base running specialist for Lynchburg, Evan, because he's more than that, but he has been in that role. He seems to embrace and thrive in that role. Nice to have a chess piece off the bench you can go to for situations like that. Gavin Collins, the hitter, 1-0 count. Smith at first. Collins was trying, I think, for a base hit bunt. Might have been a two-way concept. Sacrifice, but also if you can put down a perfect one, maybe you beat it out. We've seen a couple of those here at Foxfield this season. Carson Atkins, latest example in the third inning. It's awesome to have someone who can run the bases quickly because it shows the importance of a lineup. Collins bounces that one off the plate, foul. Now it's a one-two count. Let's see if the bunt is still on. There's nobody away with a man at first. We are in the top of the eighth. That's worth mentioning again. Lynchburg is playing at home, but they are the visitors in game two of a potential three-game series. They would be the home team if we make it to game three, but Lynchburg is down one game to none, so they need to win here to stay alive in the series. Such a crucial game one for Bridgewater, especially against a team who's ranked just because you start that momentum. Maybe get a little bit of doubt going through. Hold Look that. out, Collins got a lot into that one, and it's gone. Home run, Gavin Collins. He does it in a big spot again. The junior from Clifton, Virginia, Gavin Collins. Parks one right on cue. He got a really bad break yesterday with that ball hitting him in the bottom of the ninth. I think Gavin Collins has just made up for it right there. Two strike approach. They wanted him to sacrifice bunt. Collins gets something thigh high and just belts it out of town here at Fox Field. Lynchburg with a 4-1 lead. As loud of a roar as we have heard all day long. And you can sell the Hornets feel something a little bit more than just extending this lead, it's tension, it's the ODAC tournament. And you love to see hits like that where the entire dugout is up on their feet. Third homer of the season for Gavin Collins. So happy for that guy. The bad break yesterday with the ball hitting him, hit by this guy in the batter's box right here, Jackson Harding. And here we go, watch the approach from Gavin Collins. Major power, times up a breaking ball from Tharp perfectly. Tough play here. Harding down the line, Tharp covering, and they got him. Nice job to get over there and make the out 3-1 in the book. But yeah, Gavin Collins, so good for him. And the game, the game knows, the game knows. That's a phrase that you hear a lot. The game knows, and Gavin Collins, I think, uh, just a tough way to get erased on the base paths yesterday. He gets a big one to make up for it here today. How about Holden Fiedler? Ripping that one up the middle to keep the inning going. You like that one, Scott? That was a missile going back by Tharp's head. And Bridgewater really on the ropes now. You feel that momentum definitely swung back in the Lynchburg dugout. These are the innings where Lynchburg can be vicious, and they've done it all season long. That error at second base, too, might end up being a little bit costly because that added a run off to Collins Homer. Yeah. Yeah, you feel for the second baseman which is Camden Heron in this case. Atkins was swinging early, first pitch, went after one and didn't get enough of it. It's just a fly ball. And now all of a sudden there's two outs in the inning. So it's interesting how the momentum works. I mean, the volume went from 100 decibels there, Evan, and now it's back down to like one or two. You can just hear one or two conversations in the crowd behind us there after the Atkins fly out. 
Well, that's the game of baseball. It's so many different shifts and waves that you ride. But Lynchburg has to feel good now. Three-run lead. You have Batchmore still in the game. Seems like they're seeing the ball from Tharp pretty well. Obviously pitched yesterday, so you've had a few more reps against him. But that'll be interesting for game three, obviously, looking at different pieces of the Bridgewater bullpen. It's a good point. It's a real test of Tharp's talent and his skill how well he can pitch after giving a team multiple looks. Oh, Brandon Garcia placing it with the little, the little backhand down the line, the tennis shot there, the backhand flipper, and it will bounce out of play. So it's a ground rule double where you get the, not the tennis celebration, but the golf celebration. Brandon Garcia pulling the seven iron out of the bag and using it to put one down the line. Perfect placement there. And how about dangerous hitters, Ben Jones. He had the first homer of this ball game. Solo shot to lead off the fourth inning. Gavin Collins has homered in the eighth inning. And the door is close to being off the hinges again, Evan. It's a 4-1 Lynchburg lead. Jones can extend it. He swings on this one, got a lot of it. Center fielder going back. Is there enough room? No, it's gone. Benny Bombs has exploded again. A three-run shot. Second homer of the inning. Second home run of the game for Benny Bombs. He ran out of room really quickly. And how about an inning for the Lynchburg Hornets? Wow. E4 to start the inning after a really hard shot from Riley O'Donovan. Gavin Collins follows it up with a two-run homer. There was a single from Holden Fiedler that was a missile off the bat. Brandon Garcia, not with a high exit velocity double, but a, a perfectly placed double. And then Ben Jones, second pitch of the bat, got all of it out of here for a three-run job. I think Brett Tharp's afternoon, at least in this game, is coming to an end. We have to catch our breath. We have to find a way to put the roof back on the press box here. We're back in just a moment on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
Well, we've got all sorts of changes for Bridgewater. A new pitcher, I think, is first and foremost that we should mention, Evan. It's Joe Christopher in the ballgame. He will enter with a 6.59 earned run average, 13th appearance of the season. So no stranger to the bump. He will have to face a dangerous hitter in Avery Neves. Tharp has moved back to first. We know that one. But we do have a new catcher that we're trying to figure out. I think, I think our official scorekeeper got it, yes. And the information has been relayed to us. It is... Number 11 catching now. Brandon Hartman is catching. So the designated hitter, Brandon Hartman, I believe he went to the outfield at one point. Now he's catching. Brandon Hartman, a true utility player. Absolutely. And those are the guys, as we've said, those that's so valuable to a ball club. Two home runs in the inning for Lynchburg. Gavin Collins, a two-run shot after an error by the second baseman. Neves just missed one there. Uh, then Jackson Harding got out on a ground ball to the right side. Holden Fiedler ripped a line drive up the middle. Carson Atkins flew out. So there was two outs. Then it was a soft serve backhand double down the left hand left side uh, foul line from Brandon Garcia. That put runners at second and third. And Ben Jones dropped the bomb. Right center gap, his second home run of the day. One two count on Avery Neves. It is a 7 1 Lynchburg lead now. Five in the inning, and they got Neves looking for strike three. So the eighth is over, top half of the eighth, but it was explosive for Lynchburg. They snatch a big lead, and now six more outs to get for Jack Batchmore and the Hornets, and we can start talking about a potential game three. A five-run inning for Lynchburg, capped off by that swing. Three-run homer for Benny Bombs. Ben Jones does it again, his second dinger of the ball game. Lynchburg, four hits total in the inning, Evan. Three were extra base hits, two were home runs. That's how you make a statement with the bat. That was certainly the exclamation mark. And one thing that I've seen about these runs this season in an inning where maybe Lunchburg either bats around or gets close to it, they start in either the middle part or the late part of the lineup. It's never the one, two, three. And what the characteristic is that's successful of that is that you have runners on base when you're lead off and Ben Jones, Avery Neves step up to the plate. Yeah, we've seen a lot of big innings that have come all the runs with two outs for Lynchburg this season. The Hornets in that top of the eighth, they did get two of them, the two-run home run. So Neves will sprint to the foul line to take one out of the sky. Biesecker thought he had a well-placed double down the left field line, but Neves robs it. Uh, yeah, Lynchburg, in that, in that eighth inning, it was a leadoff error from the second baseman, and then Gavin Collins' two-run home run. That was with nobody out. Here's the sprint from Neves. Again, those impact players, man, they find a way to affect a ball game offensively, defensively. Sometimes it's just in the dugout with your energy or maybe you give, give a teammate a tip about hitting a guy or something like that. Here's a bouncing ball to Gavin Collins. He'll shuffle, throw. Good stretch from Josh Jorman. Oh, Josh Jorman got stepped on and the runner has been thrown out. Brett Tharp has been ejected from the game. He stepped on Jorman's left foot as he was stretching. And Batchmore is upset, with good reason, I would say. Lynchburg athletic trainers, a couple of the Lynchburg players are trying to calm teammates down. Gavin Collins 
Throw over to first. Oh, my. Yeah, and that, and that came so late, Evan, that unfortunately for Brett Tharp, I, I love to come to the defense of players, but it came so late that unfortunately for Brett Tharp, that is indefensible. There's no way that that was an accident. If it was bang, bang, I could see maybe, but unfortunately for Brett Tharp, I think he has to be ejected. We've already seen some tempers flaring, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about Tharp. I don't think it's an indication of his character or anything, but a big mistake there, and unfortunately he is gone from the ball game. I'd have to agree. Things have been getting heated for some time now, and at first maybe it's a close play because of the throw, but like you said, I don't think that there was really a reason, and the throw had already been – covered from Jorman so that's that's unfortunate because it, it, it overshadows and puts a, a dark cloud on what has really been a well-played couple games from Bridgewater and that's not how I think anybody wants to think about the Eagles as a team uh, and 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 then you have the situation where Josh Jorman is going to have to come out of the ball game because of this injury so again that is a that is a dark, dark cloud, I think, that, that has come over this game, unfortunately. Uh, and, and it's not fair to the rest of the players from Bridgewater for, for us to think about their team that way. And it overshadows the great things that both ball clubs have done in this game, in the previous game yesterday. And also, Evan, it's going to be a dark cloud that hangs around in game three, potentially. If we get that far, Lynchburg does have to get the outs. They, they need four more outs now with a six-run lead. But it is looking like we will have a third game, a decisive game three. And, and I think that this kind of negative air that is hanging around is going to be around for game three. And, and, I, and unfortunately for us, I think we're going to have to talk about it rather than talking about the skill of the players and all the great things that they do. I think we're going to be talking about some of the tensions that have continued to boil over. Again, it's tournament time, so sometimes that's an expectation, but it's when it – washes over the storyline that it becomes a little bit of an issue. We're going to let Batchmore take a few warm-up tosses before we resume play. Obviously, in a situation like this, too, so many different conversations between umpires and coaches just trying to handle it soundly. So yeah, it'll be a minute before we resume. Yeah, Batchmore is going to get a few warm-up tosses in here. There are two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. Lynchburg does lead 7-1. to one. And we were just kind of continuing to recap and talk about that explosive inning from the Hornets in the top of the eighth inning. And now in the bottom of the eighth, unfortunately, our conversation has had to shift to things that are outside the rules of the game. And that's a tough one as a broadcaster because you want to talk about, again, the great things that, that players and teams are doing. You don't want to talk about the ugly side. That does pop up every now and then, but it's just it's not real fun to talk about that. You know, if, if it's boxing or mixed martial arts, sure, that's what you talk about. It's or even even tough. in hockey, where, where those, you know, fighting is part of the game. But this is different. We don't want to be talking about it here. But let's talk about Joe Gordon, who is the new first baseman for, Lin for Lynchburg. He's a freshman from Midlothian. I don't think Joe Gordon has any bats on the season. But let's check that out. Good moment for a freshman, Joe Gordon. This is why you always got to be ready. Even if you're not playing a whole lot, you just never know what happens with injuries, especially yeah. tournament time. Crazy things happen. There's a strikeout looking. Batchmore didn't even realize it. The umpires are going to restart this. Some, something something happened there. Uh, the third base umpire is pointing over at the first base ump and saying, no, he didn't call it. A, 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 they appealed one. Let's get. Let's figure this out. We may even have to go to the replay to figure it out. It's another one where coaches are out of the dugout voicing their displeasure with umpires. Um, the umpire checked on the previous – I don't even know, Evan. I've lost, I've lost my mind. Yeah, the umpire called it a foul ball on the previous pitch to make it an 0-2 count. Here comes Batchmore again, breaking ball in the dirt. Yeah, and that's the other thing. What's the count? It's 1-2 now. Okay. We have truly seen it all. We have. I – Apologies, fans. Some of this stuff is so weird, you don't even know what's going on. And it's not like a mic'd up situation where the umpire tells you, hey, what happened? You just got to kind of guess sometimes. It's a one-two count. And there are two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Ground ball left side. Oh, what a play by Collins. 
Throws across, and the new man, Joe Gordon, makes the scoop. Way to make the ball find you, Joe Gordon. Another nice defensive play from Gavin Collins, and Lynchburg will try to add on in the top of the ninth inning. Hornets lead 7-1 over Bridgewater in game two of a potential three-game series. A wild eighth inning from a lot of different perspectives. We could we could spend the entire next game recapping that eighth inning, Evan. Uh, offensively for Lynchburg, it was explosive. The bottom half, the defensive side, was, I don't know, weird? I'm going to use that word to sum it up. Climactic. And the crazy thing about it, it was three up, three down. <laughs> right. It took us a little while yeah. to get there. It was like a 20-minute half inning, but it was three up, three down. It featured an ejection of Brett Tharp stepping on Josh Jorman's foot. And unfortunately, Josh Jorman, a guy who uh, missed time in the postseason, missed the last couple postseasons because of injury. We don't know the extent of his injury right now, but he is out of the game at the moment. He is getting some more treatment from our wonderful athletic trainers. He's in the best hands possible over there. The ankle is being iced right now. And this guy into the spotlight, Joe Gordo. Joe Gordon is hitting. He made a nice scoop there on another nice Gavin Collins play. Joe Gordon, do it one time, Joe. The dugout, just they, they were as loud right there for the single from Joe Gordon as they were for the home runs. And that is absolutely how you put an exclamation point on things if you're Lynchburg. The previous guy gets knocked out because of a dirty play. The sub comes in and bangs a base hit. Congratulations, Joe Gordon. Another pinch hitter in. This is Logan Webster. Again, you never know when your moment is going to come. And for Joe Gordon, couldn't have a better start as he comes into this ball game, getting a single. As you said, Webster is coming in. It's been Riley O'Donovan who's occupied the spot throughout this ball game. We've seen Webster quite a few times throughout the year in the lineup, in the early part of the lineup as well. Yeah, I wonder if we might see Webster start in game two today, three of the series. Never know. We'll wait. See if we make it that far. There's business to attend to. Lynchburg will have to put the finishing touches on things in the bottom half of the ninth. Yes, the Hornets are the visiting team in this game, even though we're playing it at Fox Field. But Joe Gordon, that is awesome right there. And Logan Webster in the batter's box now for Lynchburg. He'll swing on that and foul it away. Maybe it's not a foul ball. It is a foul ball, but it was very close to being fielded over there on the right side. Just stayed in play. That's a scary part of the outfield, too, mm -hmm. because where the fence starts to meet the line, you don't necessarily see it coming. And obviously, that's baseball having different dimensions in every park you play in. Yeah. First at bat of the season for Joe Gordon, by the way. And that is why the coaches are telling you all year, hey, young guys, keep working, stay ready. And a lot of times you're sitting there thinking, Evan, yeah, 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 okay, there's three guys in front of me. I'm never getting in, coach, whatever. But this is proof right there that you just never know. A playoff game, an elimination game. It's a must-win game for Lynchburg. Swing and a miss there from Webster, although I, I don't know if we called it a swing and a miss or not. It was a check swing, but he is out. 
on strikes. So one out for Gavin Collins, who homered in his last at bat. Let's not forget that. All the craziness that has happened, let's not leave Gavin Collins out. I think he erased some some minor demons from yesterday where he led off the bottom of the ninth with a double with ninth with a double, excuse me, but then got called out on a ball that hit him off the bat of Jackson Harding. Looked like Collins was hacking for the downs again there. He went after that. There's a sense to baseball where you can really feel it when it's in your bat and obviously statistics or not you know what you bring to the plate and for Gavin Collins I think that home run is an indication of at bats going way past that one just the comfort he's had when he steps up yeah and staying positive with your process even though you make some outs Gavin Collins hits the ball hard and long a lot of times another nice rip at that that he couldn't fully connect with but, yeah, just, just keeping that even keel approach. Maybe you don't have a bunch of hits. Maybe you take an 0 for day, but you keep working on the right things. You keep banging balls in the right direction, and eventually you get a big one like he had earlier. Collins has made a couple fantastic defensive plays this weekend, and really his defense has gotten better and better as the year has gone on. Playing that hot corner over there, never easy. He's played a couple games at shortstop, actually, this season. 2-2 Two -two count. And Gavin Collins, a junior, one of the all-time best. Over 135 career hits. He'll flare that one to the right side. I was going to immediately say foul ball, but after that weird play, <laughs> Evan, you got to be careful. Some, some balls know. are not as they seem off the bat. Well, we've seen a few of those today. Even saw one, if you remember that ground rule double from Garcia early on. There are ways that the ball acts and a manner that it normally doesn't. Good stop from Brandon Hartman there. Started the game as the DH, has played some outfield, and now catching for Bridgewater, their leading average man among some other categories as well. Joe Gordon off on the pitch, and it's ball four. Good approach from Gavin Collins, and that shows, again, his class right there because you just homered. You want to break the game even wider open than it is, but you have to have the right approach, and Collins with the perfect approach there to not sniff at that ball just off the plate. Absolutely, and then this ninth inning, even though you have a six-run lead, you can't really think about the scoreboard in a situation like this because maybe next game you're in an at-bat where you're just trying to think back to your approach, how it's coming off the bat, and so for the Hornets, you want to keep extending it. Dive at second base, close play coming here, and they got it. Very nice stuff from Camden Heron. Diving to his left, did not field it cleanly, but able to scramble to it, kept it around, and then threw to first to get Jackson Harding out. Tough luck there for Jack Harding. He will get held hitless on the day, it looks like, unless we have extra innings. And Holden Fiedler, who is one for four with that very sharp single in the big eighth inning. Here's another look at it. Yeah, nice one laying out there and out of the cloud of dust, the throw over to first to get the out. On well, a situation like that, too, especially at second base, you're just trying to contain the ball in the infield, even if you can't get that throw over. So very impressive play to get the throw over. We know the Heron has had that error early on, so maybe a little bit of a redemption play. Sure was. Runners on second and third now, though, for Holden Fiedler. This is career game 165 for Mr. Fiedler. 2-0 count. Oh, he pumped that one into left center. Biesecker's not going to get there. It's a two-run double for Holden Fiedler. Lynchburg piling on now in the top of the ninth. Got to love that for Holden Fiedler. Second hit of the ball game. Drives in two more. Joe Gordon with the single in the first run scored in his career. Fabulous start to the freshman campaign for Joe Gordon. Gavin Collins came in to score as well there. The dugout is loving it, and if you're holding Fiedler, you've seen the ball coming off your bat pretty strongly the last few times, and finally going to get one to pay off. He had a single on the eighth, following it up with this two-run double. Swing and a miss from Carson Atkins. Two outs. Fiedler is at second. And, yes, it's a 9-1 advantage for Lynchburg. Mm, tried for the backhand. This is going to be a tough play. No throw to first. I think it's going to go down as an infield single for Carson Atkins. It's actually now a three-hit day for Carson Atkins. So he has quietly put together a great performance. That's the thing about this game. 
so many guys have done things, Evan. It's hard to really remember them all. Let's let's not leave out Brandon Pond. What a fabulous start he had for Lynchburg. Got the Hornets exactly where they needed to be. He left the game when it was two to one, and now it's an eight-run Lynchburg lead. But Brandon Pond did his job. Got to feel good about that. Brandon Garcia with a chance for even more. Atkins will take off, throw to second. He is in safely. Two in scoring position for Brandon Garcia as he took ball one. Atkins made that look extremely easy. Just a nice jump and able to get a pretty easy slide down. And now you got another runner in scoring position. And Lynchburg up eight now. Base hit here probably puts them up 11 to one. Ten run lead. You almost wonder if you go get a different pitcher and save Jack Batchmore a few pitches. Now, I think Batch wants the ball. And from a comfort standpoint, I think it makes you feel better to just have him go ahead and finish the game. But you could, you could make the argument that you can save Batch's arm just a little bit, get somebody else some work. It's never, it's never fully comfortable for a coach until the game is finally over, though. It's not over yet. Lynchburg does lead by eight. But it is not over yet as Brandon Garcia takes strike two. Full count for the freshman who has extended his hitting streak. It's another multi-hit game for Brandon Garcia. He's got three of them. He'll take a walk there to keep the inning going and hand the baton to Ben Jones. There is nowhere to put Ben Jones now. Bridgewater will bring in a new arm to face Benny Bombs. We'll keep it right here. Because That's a, a further illustration for Garcia, how to get on base in different ways. He has two singles, a double, now a walk, and it's just, we've talked all year long about how when tournament time comes, it's valuable to find different ways. Obviously, it's a game that's not very predictable, so you have to find ways to get on base, and I think the flair that everyone in this lineup is at today just shows that this Lynchburg squad is a much different team from maybe what was playing yesterday. It's amazing. I'll use the phrase again, talent needs trauma. Extend that to an entire team. It's a talented Lynchburg team. They've been successful all season, undefeated at home until yesterday. And Bridgewater deserves all the credit for that. They played outstanding. They came up with big hits when they needed them, big defensive plays, good pitching. Eagles really earned the win yesterday. But yes, Lynchburg, I think that loss yesterday lit a little bit of a fire. And speaking of fire, Ben Jones' bat has just been flammable all season long. Last one hit the scoreboard. That was the three-run homer. He's hit a solo homer. He'll be facing a new pitcher, which I think is a good move from Bridgewater. But Ben Jones has homered off both the pitchers he's seen today. One off the starter, Nick Harris, and one off the closer, Brett Tharp. So perhaps a chance to do it again with the bases loaded for Ben Jones. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, Evan. Well, it's not out of the question, so I think it's <laughs> worth with, mentioning. With Ben Jones, a home run is never out of the question. This guy is a freshman, by the way, fans. Eight homers, eight doubles. He's got more walks than strikeouts. He's got uh, 27 starts now, and I think it's like 33 hits. Nuts from Ben Jones. One half of the Caped Crusader duo from Durham, North Carolina. High school teammate with Brandon Garcia. It's been so fun to watch this season, and I'm sure these next few years, they definitely have more in store for the Hornets. Get inside Ben Jones' head right here, Evan. What's he thinking? Well, base is loaded. I don't <laughs> think you let up. I mean, it's you've seen it go over the fence twice. New pitcher, I think this guy has been relentless all season long. He's looking to add to it. It will be strike one. The pitcher is number 34, Mitchell Vedder. Mitchell Vedder is on for Bridgewater. Tough assignment here, base is loaded. And the most dangerous hitter in the zip code in the batter's box right now. 0-2 count though. <laughs> he hits balls out of the zip code, which was the line and a great one. 0-2 count though. Good job by Vetter to get ahead. Ben Jones, he'll settle for a single. It'll score Fiedler. Atkins coming around, could have a play at the plate, but the throw is wide. Nice job by Hartman, the catcher, to run it down. A little bit of tough luck for Vetter. I mean, he kept Ben Jones in the yard. You shouldn't feel terrible about that, but there you go. The skill and the quality of Ben Jones as a hitter. He doesn't need to hit it over the fence to make an impact. He'll slap a single over there for two more RBI. They're going to put Avery Neves on again. 
That will be walk number three of the game for Neves. He's the all-time conference leader in that stat. Two of them have been intentional. Neves has been hit one time. Ben Jones now with six runners driven in in the game. Six of the 11 runs have been driven in by Ben Jones. That's an approach that if you can carry that over to game three as it looks like we're heading that way now, you're going to have a very solid lineup. Bull, bullpen activity for Lynchburg. I think we're going to see exactly what we talked about. I think Jack Batchmore is going to get a chance to save his arm. Joe Gordon is up again. So he got his, again, this is back to how crazy baseball is. Joe Gordon got his first at bat of the season earlier this inning. Now he's getting his second at bat of the season in the same inning and a chance to add to his impressive 1,000 average here. That's the beauty of baseball. You never know how many chances you're going to get. We've seen a little bit of the ugly side today, but we have seen the beautiful side of this game as well. Joe Gordon will watch a slider go out of the zone. 1-1 one, one count. Base is still loaded. 11-1. Don't stop now if you're Joe Gordon. He scored a run. He could get his first career RBI or two or three, four. Even, you never know. And fans, this is an exaggeration, but if you have somebody batting 1,000 at the plate, you know, one at bat, 100, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Confidence is high. Confidence is high as Gordon fouls one over the Lynchburg dugout. So Mitchell Vetter, again, a little tip of the cap to him for getting ahead 0-2 on Ben Jones. He showed no fear going right after power man with bases loaded, but does surrender an opposite field single. 2-2 two -two count. Two away. Here's the delivery from Vetter. Wipeout slider. And yes, base is loaded, so the catcher Hartman with a good block can just step on home. So the inning is over, but another successful one for Lynchburg. They score five in the top of the eighth, four in the top of the ninth. And it will be Jack Batchmore staying on to close it out with a 10 run lead. So we're coming to the finish of what has been a wild game. And it looks like, it looks like, barring some absolute insanity, we're going to be heading to game three. You never know. I mean, in a game like this, you never know. But Lynchburg is up 10, and they've got their closer, Jack Batchmore, on the mound to try to shut it down. Hunter Clever is the hitter for Bridgewater, one for three on the day. We're going to remember this one for a long time. We're going to remember this season for a long time, regardless of where it goes from here. Absolutely. As lunch has already started for some of, the <laughs> some of the staff in the press box. We'll get there, Evan. We'll get there. We'll get a bite in between games. Well, it's doubleheader days. It's always fun to watch some baseball, but yeah. you got to make sure that you're ready to describe the action. <laughs> It's been hard to describe it today, hasn't it, buddy? It's been a little bit of everything, but that's how we like watching baseball. It's going to be hit out to right field, pop up, recorded for out number one. Jackson Harding still in right field. We've had quite a few changes for both teams, but it is the starting cleanup hitter, Hunter Clever, flying out to the starting right fielder. Lucas Bauer steps in. He's 0 for 3. And if you're Bridgewater, you just, you just try to keep the inning going, get on any way you can. Hit, walk, 
hit by pitch, error, doesn't really matter right now if you're an eagle. And you're probably still working on your uh, individual numbers as well. Those good hitters, they never just throw away and at bat, even in a 10-run deficit. What will be interesting if this does indeed go to the second game, it'll just be unique to see what happens to the energy levels because yeah. it seems like after that play, I'm not saying everything is really deflated. We've still seen some very nice at-bats. Yeah. But you still have to be intentional coming out of the dugout saying this is a big game three. Yeah, and, and I think the break in between games, I, I think we can argue – it probably benefits Bridgewater, right? Because Lynchburg's got all the momentum right now. We're not overstating that. Anybody that's watched the game or is at the game can see that. So Bridgewater's going to get a 30-minute break, mellow out, try to regroup. If you're Lynchburg, you know, you can't necessarily stay completely hype and be 10 of 10 over there in between the game. You're going to mellow out a little bit. Your energy's going to dip. It will be up to the Hornets to try to get the energy level back up to begin game three we do have a pinch hitter in the ball game it was a walk issued by Jack Batchmore first free pass he's given out today back to that energy comment that's one point that Lynchburg has really worked on this season and most of the time you're focusing on the beginning of games trying to get out to that start make sure that you're working and having the momentum in your favor but today we've seen that it's going to be a late stage of the ball game where they come through and going into the next game, how can you get things started? And whoever's on the mound, you have to think, is going to come out with a little bit of energy and flair. Yeah, nice one there from Jack Batchmore. Maybe maybe a subtly tough situation for Batchmore because you don't want to completely turn it into a bullpen session, but I think his intensity level has obviously dropped a little bit. Strikeout looking there on Sumter. It was still Sumter hitting. It was Luke Tomjack that came in to pinch run for Bridgewater, so I may have misspoke. We'll get to see Jeffrey Snyder hitting from the right side for the first time today. He is a true switch hitter. Evan, a nice option for Bridgewater to have. Three left-handed at-bats against Brandon Pond. He was one for two with a walk. Middle of the lineup, too, and really at this stage of the ball game, it goes for any hitter, but the more relievers you bring into a game, switch hitting, Always a good option to have. Something we haven't really mentioned a lot this season, you don't see a whole lot of switch hitters, but the ones that you do have can be valuable when you're constructing a lineup. 0-2 count. Batch will get contact, flipped out. Ben Jones is going to get under it. Final out of the ball game, and we will move to a third and decisive one here at Fox Field. Bridgewater wins. A tight one yesterday. Lynchburg, a blowout victory in game two of three. Started close, but Lynchburg broke it open. Solo homer from Ben Jones in the fourth. Lynchburg scratches one across in the seventh to take the 2-1 lead. And then it's five in the top of the eighth, featuring a two-run homer from Gavin Collins, and then a three-run bomb from Benny Bombs. Lynchburg actually tacked on four in the top of the ninth to put it completely out of reach. So we step aside, 30-minute break for us, and then we will be back to begin game three here. Winner advances to Richmond to the final four of the ODAC tournament. You do not want to miss the third game of this series between Bridgewater and Lynchburg. It'll be coming up in half an hour on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. 
This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Every great college has a great city. For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person, competing at a Division III level. It created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track at Otterbein. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career move.
A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. Welcome back here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. We're going to have to wait a few hours before we start game three of this series. As we know, tied 1 1 between Bridgewater and Lynchburg. Rain is coming through the area, so the tarp is going on the field. We're going to try to play it today, but it won't happen after 4 30. So if we have to wait until that late, then we will have a new update or a different time. But for now, we're going to wait. There will be a new link, so obviously keep your eyes peeled for that. There will be a new link for this game when it is played. Stay tuned to Lynchburg Sports for updates and on Twitter, and that will have all the updates about the weather, about when we play, or if we have to postpone to a later date. So once again, thank you for watching Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Game three will be coming a little bit later.